All right, welcome back to the Iron Nerd Podcast, guys. I'm your host, Freyway, and I'm here with my co-host, Kenny. Red boy. And today we are here for, I believe, episode 78. I think we're 78 episodes in, 22 away from 100. And yeah, we have a couple of things to talk about today all over the place. No specific one topic. So it's going to be one of those kind of episodes where we just, you know, rant a little bit, talk about the Capcom showcase that just happened. There's some yes, other things sir. that happened. Uh, but before we get to that, I do want to give a shout out to the people on our Patreon at the beginning of this episode. Usually I do it towards the end or in the middle. But I figure this episode, I'll just do it at the beginning. So without further ado, on our Patreon at I'm There, we have Connie, Austin, Leon, Quest, Garen, Xavier, Hylian, TCG Automotive, Silver Chronic, Tyree Tinsley, Dimitri Barnes, Alexander Brissett, Vinny Casello, Giovanni Avelos, Game for Yoshi, Alex Flamer, Andre Reynolds, CJ, Dub K Dad One, Saw at Dabbers Gaming Cafe, Dan Vrabel, Dennis Milburn, Joseph Marcello, Red Vines, First to Home, Dalis Fernandez, Tom Badabiki, S. Akuma, Mitchell Nels, Midwest Gaming, William Shapiro, Dimitri Sferdas, Vince Marquette, Dallas Bailey, KJ, Biz, Roz Wife, Luke Feeney, and Nick Stango. Also, as far as um, Saul goes at Dabbers Gaming Cafe, he also has the company Dank Ritual, which has the uh, cloth play mats and the double deck boxes. If you've seen them on my actual Facebook, I've posted it. I play Edison format right now for Yu-Gi-Oh! And I use the Dank Ritual Spellground and the Dank Ritual double deck box. It's really nice. Uh, check out dankritual.com if you want to see it. The cloth play mat feels really good. It feels like the standard like cloth play mats that are circulating right now. And the deck box, a lot of people like the deck box a lot. I have the pink one. There's also a blue one. Uh, the deck box, when you open it up, it has like this crazy artwork on it. And it's huge. So it holds my deck, my side deck, and you know my extra deck. And also, if I wanted to put dice or anything in there too, it has that space as well. But just check that out. Dankritual.com. Just want to give them a shout out since they sent me the product for free. Just full disclosure there, but I actually genuinely use it and I like it. Uh, and people have asked me about it, so I just wanted to make sure I got that out the way. Hell anyway, how are you doing, Kenny? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. I uh, had a good laugh earlier, but um, yeah, no, I'm just chilling. I watched the uh, Capcom showcase, mm -hmm. and right now, before we get into that, I've been looking at this picture. So it's like the Capcom showcase, and it said what time it started. You have it up as the background here. Yeah, and. <clears throat> At first, you see the C, the, the yellow C is obviously for Capcom, where the spotlight is. And then I was like, oh, that's cool. The silhouette of the shadow is supposed to be Pac-Man. And then it instantly, I was like, wait a minute, Pac-Man Pac -Man is Namco, not Capcom. And so now I've been staring at this, like, what the fuck is that shadow supposed to be? <laughs> like, is it, another, is it a reverse C for the com of Capcom? Is it a six? Yeah. It, it might be a six for Street Fighter Six. It could just be nothing, but it looks deliberate. Which makes yeah. me feel like it's something, and I'm just staring at it, and I can't figure out what it is. Well, wait, you mean, so to see that's in the word showcase on this picture, right? Yeah, that's the C for Capcom. But I'm talking yeah. about how the spotlight comes down on it, and the shadow it creates. Okay. It looks like, the shadow looks like it's supposed to be something too, if that makes sense. I got you. I got, I got what you mean. Like, it looks like it could be a 6 for Street Fighter Six. I could just yeah. be seeing that. And that's I one of the things know. they did reveal at the showcase. Uh, I guess, starting right off the bat, so if you guys don't know, last night, I actually streamed playing a video game for the first time, I guess. Was it the first time? I want to say mean, it was the first time. Yeah, it's the, if you don't count, which I don't think it really counts, if you don't count Dueling Book. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Book. yeah, I don't count but Dueling Book, because that's like a that. Dueling, just a sim. But yes, I bought a capture card on Amazon at like 11 a.m. yesterday, which was Tuesday, uh, June 14th, and it came the same day, and also... The demo for Sunbreak came out last night at 10 p.m. So I was able to get a capture card, some Elgato device. I don't even know anything about it. I just connected it really, really quick. It took me literally a minute to get it all set up. Like, I swear to God, I didn't do anything. I just watched a, a minute-long YouTube video and got myself set up. And I couldn't believe how easy it actually is to just stream. I don't know if I need more stuff, but, like, for my first stream, it actually was pretty simple to just, like, just plug good. and play. To set up a simple setup, it's pretty easy. Once you want to get into, like, a couple more things, it can be more annoying, obviously. But yeah. to get a simple, just, like, get it up, it's actually not that hard. Yeah, it wasn't that hard. But you know what I really realized? It's it's also how, during the pandemic, uh, both of us have picked up a lot of skills. And one of the skills I picked up is OBS in general, right? Like, yeah, yeah, because yeah. Of the Because of the podcast, because of other things that I do, I learned how to use OBS in the last two years, which is something I knew nothing about before... And, and I think that 
it made it easy because I already have knowledge of OBS, not That's necessarily. True. That's true. Yeah, I think if I just, if, if, let's say if I had to start from the beginning, I didn't have a capture card and I also had no idea how to use streaming software. It would have took You're you asking for a, a Yeah, because then I have to set up, because I have a green screen set up. I had a green screen set up for two years as well, yeah. right? So like, it wasn't just the, the, the capture card by itself. It's also the combination of things that I already had set up. So I've been kind of slowly inching towards streaming in a weird yeah. way. Like I've streamed myself dueling. I've streamed myself podcasting. And so, yeah, now we're at the point where I'm actually streaming. I've, you know, I've watched Kenny who streams on Critical Hit Plus on Twitch. And I decided that I wanted to do something like that for my son or summary because I'm going to be playing a lot. Yeah, we're definitely like a be, ton. We're going to be playing it a lot off but we're also probably be streaming it on both I Am Nerd Podcast YouTube, Critical Hit Plus yeah. Twitch. Like, I think we're going to stream that game a lot and a lot of places. Yeah. Well, and we places. can both, like, I could be streaming on the YouTube. You could be streaming on, on Twitch, Twitch right? at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. We could be in the Discord talking to each other and yep. doing the same hunt and everything. That's actually really decent that that's possible. I remember sometimes you would take a break from Monster Hunter while you were streaming. You would say, I wish I could watch from your perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so what I would do, like, let's say we're streaming Monster Hunter Sunbreak when it comes out, right? And let's say I want to just, like, I hunted a couple times and I want to, like, eat. Let's say I just want to eat. What yeah. I could do is just um, basically make my stream your stream. I would get your window, put it on my stream. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. And so my stream would just be watching your stream. And yeah. I could be hanging out and just watching your perspective as I eat macaroni and cheese or whatever. Yeah, that's true. And I thought about that when you said that. This is over a year ago now uh, when, you know, Monster Hunter Rise first came out. But I was like, that would be really cool if there was some way I could share my gameplay to you so you could see from my perspective, like, how I move, how I approach the monster. Yeah. Stuff like that. I think it is interesting to watch other people play uh, anything that you also play. At least for me, I like to learn how other people play and think. Um, you, you never know what you might learn. But yes. Yeah. So the Sunbreak demo came out yesterday. It was also the very first thing that Capcom revealed in their showcase, which I was surprised about because I figure Monster Hunter is probably the biggest thing that they have at the moment, especially because it's it's like the thing, the biggest thing that's coming out right now. It's coming out in two yeah, weeks. Yeah. Like Monster Hunter Sunbreak's coming out in two weeks. It's Capcom's biggest game. And I thought that they would wait until the end, but luckily they did it at the very beginning. Yeah, and man, it did not disappoint. I think the way they structured it was pretty smart. They opened it with the, the thing that's the most anticipated right now, just Sunbreak, because yeah. that's coming out in like two weeks. Yeah. So they opened it with the most anticipated thing first. Then they went in like some other things that I don't really care about. And then like <laughs> in the middle, in the middle, they showed some Street Fighter 6 stuff, which leading up to the showcase, they've been showing a lot of Street Fighter 6 stuff. Like I was about to say, I saw more Street Fighter 6 leading up to the showcase than, than in, in the, the actual. Showcase. Yeah. Because... Yeah. We talked about, I don't remember when it was, but a while ago, we did a Patreon episode on, like, fighting, on something, like, fighting anime or games or whatever. And yeah, it was yeah. right when Street Fighter Six was first announced, and Ryu looked like the Incredible Hulk. And, uh, yes, that was my exact comment, too. Something about how jacked he looked. Jacked, and, like, the lighting made him look green. It was funny. Yeah. But, so, since then, like, within the last couple of weeks, Capcom has shown a bunch of info for Street Fighter Six. In the middle, they had, like, the showcase. We can talk more about that. And then... What was smart though would make sense why what they ended on. They ended on like they had like random Resident Evil info about like yeah. games that are already out, but then they ended on like their big announcement that a lot of people are excited for is Resident Evil 4 uh remake. Yes. Which, which looks amazing. And it's we'll, pretty we'll... huge because Resident Evil 4, it's like people have favorite Resident Evils, like how there's Ocarina of Time and a Link to the Past, and I guess now Breath of the Wild, or how there's like FF seven and FF six. I feel like the Resident Evils, like, in debate for the best ones by the community are, like, Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 4. Um, so Resident Evil 4 getting a remake is pretty big, because that's that's the top two Resident Evils from what I've seen from people that love Resident Evil. Yeah, Resident Evil 4, I remember when we were young, right? Because that came out on the GameCube. Yep. yep. So Resident Evil 4, I remember when it came out on the GameCube. I don't play Resident Evil games. I've shared on this podcast many times my experience <laughs> with Resident Evil and how... It has scarred me as a kid from Nemesis. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis specifically was the one that scarred me. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't heard that story, go back to some of the older podcast episodes, but I refuse to play them at this point. And I just remember I used to be really big into GameCube, playing all the great things, Sonic Adventure 2, um, you know, Power Stone, everything, like Melee, just whatever. And Resident Evil 4 would sweep the award shows. Like, it was, it was, uh, it won best game of the year like it was game of the year 
it won all these other awards and accolades. And I couldn't quite understand how a Resident Evil game, because I just didn't have high expectations or hopes for anything Resident Evil related. Not just because my experience with it was bad, because I just didn't see it for that kind of game. I didn't know that yeah. people would love it that much. But apparently, paying someone to scare you is a really big market. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> people love that resident evil 4 did fantastic and i give it its flowers just because of the fact that i remember how big it was at the time like you just had to be there it's one of those kind of situations yeah, i just yeah. remember everyone who was a gamer probably besides me loved resident evil 4 and i just was not at all interested that shit did not speak to me whatsoever <laughs> you couldn't get me to load it up four was the last one i played and i don't think i ever beat it i've beaten one two and three like back in okay. the day and then I played four, but I never got around to beating it. And then I never even, I never touched like five, six, seven. I think they're all That's eight. interesting that you play what is arguably the best Resident Evil and didn't beat that one, but you beat the other ones. Not to say that they're bad. Yeah, yeah. I I'm beat- just surprised though, because like you love Nintendo way more than me. And yeah. like that was one of the games that had, that was one of the game, when people say GameCube's top 10 games, Resident Evil 4 comes out as number one often. Yeah. Like I, that is, is that big. For, so for one, two, and three, so. I talked about it before, but one, two, and three, I never owned personally. I've never owned a single Resident Evil game. I beat one, two, and three at my uncle's house. It was my uncle Joe. And I remember the first Resident Evil I played was Resident Evil 3. It was like the weekend that game came out, and me and him beat it that weekend. Like we stayed up all night and beat it, I think in either one night or like two nights, whatever. Yeah. So three was the first one I beat. And then just, I used to go to his house, like his, his mom used to watch me. Um, a lot and i remember i would watch like power rangers and like play like their systems or whatever and so i beat resident evil one and two at his house i never i never owned one two or three uh but i beat all three at his house and then four i only ever played because i borrowed it from a friend and i never i never beat it i just like borrowed it and like gave it back or whatever yeah but for whatever reason i never bought a resident evil game myself uh i'll probably buy the four remake and finally beat it though yeah it looks really really good it almost I'm not gonna lie, now I'm an adult and it's not as easy to scare me, I would say. Like video I don't think a video game can really do it to me the way it did when I was, let's say, ten. Yeah. But uh I I almost wanna say I would like to play something like that too, but just because I haven't played really any game like that in the last twenty years, it would just be far fetched for me to actually commit to it. Cause there's other games that I wanna play first. Like there's I still wanna play Kirby. And Forgotten yeah, Dreamland yeah, yeah. or whatever it's called. And Forgotten it's City. Just, it's so frustrating how many good games. Som- like, sometimes I feel like we go through a drought of games and yeah. I don't have anything to play. And then all of a sudden I get hit with shit. Like, there's still Kirby. Mario Strikers just came out, which is the Mario soccer game. Yep. And I want to play that game so fucking bad. But it's like, it comes out between... um, Hi- uh, Not Hyrule Warriors. Fire Emblem Warriors comes out this Friday. The demo came out last week. Monster Hunter Sunbreak demo just came out. The game comes out in like two weeks. Uh, and then right after that is Xenoblade 3. And then there was a game. Yeah, yeah. So based, oh, that's what I was trying to say. Fire Emblem Warriors is a game I really want to play. But then Sunbreak comes out a week later. And then Xenoblade 3 comes out the next month. So for me, it's like I'm going to be playing Sunbreak for a full month at least. And then yeah. Xenoblade 3 I'll be playing. And then I'll beat those two games before going back to play Fire Emblem Warriors, which is a game I really, really want to play because I love Fire Emblem. But I'm not actually going to get to dive into that game until two months later after I play these other games. And then there's still yeah. Kirby and Mario Strikers and various other games that I just haven't gotten to yet. Like, I just beat Triangle Strategy, like, two months ago. It's, it's a lot. Yeah, it's crazy what's on the horizon as far as gaming. For me, it's really just Sunbreak is the main thing. But knowing myself, I'll play it for a good two months. The good thing is they did reveal a roadmap. So I guess... Yeah, that's that's exciting. Yeah, I I I'll play for a good two months for sure, like really hardcore, and then it'll obviously slow down because it gets to a point where there's not much else for you to do. Like the end game grind is always going to be end game grind, whatever they make it. Yeah, uh, they did a good job with Iceborne, and the roadmap for Iceborne was really well done. It seems like they're trying to follow the same thing for this game, where every season there's going to be oh, something got, coming out. I got something to say about that roadmap. So yeah, well, how about finding the demo? So before this podcast, oh, okay, started, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's talk about that. So the that. demo, the demo dropped literally yesterday at 10 p.m. and uh, I personally literally couldn't find it. I mean, I went to the eShop, I typed in Monster Hunter, and I didn't see anything that just blatantly said Monster Hunter demo, which is what I was expecting. I was fully expecting 
to type in Monster Hunter. Page, and it just, yes, I also thought that when I loaded up the eShop, it would be the very first thing. And like, you know, I have the featured yeah, yeah. section. Yep. I thought that it would just be right there and everyone would just click it and it would crash the servers and I'll be happy. But yep. no, no one could find it. Everyone was on Facebook talking about where the fuck is it? I went on YouTube and people were going live. And some streamers had actually found out how to get it. And they were explaining to people over and over and over again to the point where they had to pin it That's to so say, like, this funny. is how you get to it. But they did a bad job at how to get so, to the demo. It's funny because before the podcast started, I go to because yesterday I just had shit to do. I wasn't able to play the demo. And so I, I so before the podcast today, I, I asked for age. I was like, hey, uh, I was like, I guess the demo is just like a one day thing. Um, I was going to download it today and maybe give it a try. But I couldn't find the demo. I guess they took it down. It was only for one day. <laughs> and then Which I learned. Wild. And then I learned that like, no, they didn't take it down. It's just that fucking hard to find. Like I thought, like I legit was looking for it and I just couldn't find yeah, it. Yeah, when you like, said to me you thought it was a one day thing, I said, damn. You thought that you missed it already? Yeah. That's actually so sad that you thought because of how hard it is to access. So in order to access it, to be clear, you had to go to Monster Hunter Rise. As though you were going to buy Monster Hunter Rise instead of going to Monster Hunter Sunbreak. Because they're they're separate. Yeah, they're the separate things. That's what I that's so dumb. This so if you go to Sunbreak, so there's no downloadable demo or anything. Which that's where I was looking for a while. You go to Sunbreak and you're like, okay, it must be here. And it's not. I thought it was gonna be its own separate thing, if I'm being honest. I thought it was gonna be its entirely I thought it was gonna be separate from Sunbreak. But it wasn't. So that's I what I Sunbreak. thought at first. I thought it would be its own separate thing. I couldn't find it. I was like, okay, and I just went to Sunbreak and like it was just telling me, like, because I already bought Sunbreak. It's like, okay. Same. It's like you pre-ordered it. And I yeah. kept scrolling up and down, up and down, up and down. And, and I was, was like, nothing. all right, I guess the demo. I was like, I guess I missed the demo. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I thought I missed it as well. And then as I'm watching the streamer, he finally says for maybe the fifth time, and I could tell by how he said it, he was pretty annoyed. But he said it for like the fifth time as he was downloading his version of the demo, because it took me about 15 minutes to download. But he was saying, you have to go to Monster Hunter Rise, the base game, go to download demo, and then it gives you two options. Download the regular Monster Hunter Rise demo, and then that the Sunbreak is demo so is below it. dumb. I just don't understand who... I think that they genuinely messed up. I don't think that this was intentional. I really just don't. It seems so stupid that it would be that obscure to find it. Uh, but maybe, maybe they thought it'll crash the servers if we just let it be too obvious how to get to it. So if you funnel people in slowly by having it you have to go on Reddit to find out how to download the demo. Maybe think, that was like their way to slow it down. I think you're giving like, them too much credit. I, I know. I, I think this is all that happened. Is they were like, well, Thunbrick's not a game. It's a DLC, so we'll just put it on even though... Da, 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 da. That's what I think yeah. happened. I think they put I, the demo on Rise. Because you know what's funny? is I thought of that, uh, in my head, as I was on the eShop, I was like, I wonder if it's on the Monster Hunter Rise base game, right? And I almost yeah. went through the effort of, because I, I guess I would have found it. I almost went to Monster Hunter Rise base game. Before I did that, I, I remembered. I was like, no, Monster Hunter Rise already has its own demo. So that would be kind of silly to put it there because it, it would make it obscure and hard to find. And I was like, I guess I just missed it. <laughs> and then I fucking closed it. I'm still, it's still wild to me that you thought, I missed this demo that was for one day. A one day demo is also petty, by yeah. the way. Because yeah. like, fuck the working class, right? <laughs> like just, yeah. I absolutely fuck anybody who has any responsibilities that can't be available for this one day event. But I wouldn't up. be surprised if some company did something like that. But yes, they revealed in the showcase like the jungle map from Monster Hunter 2. Dude, uh, okay. So that got me so excited because I watched the showcase, right? I watched it after you watched it. So you mm -hmm. told me that they do show monsters in there. So I watched it and I kind of like clicked through it because there was like, even though some of them are returning monsters, I kind of don't want to know what... Because I, I just... Every time I see a monster, I'm like, oh, shit, cool. Because I, I played Generations Ultimate, and so there are some old monsters that I now know. And so when mm. I see them for the first time, I want to get hyped. I want, like, for example, I already know uh, the Hermit Crabs in the game because he was, like, in the first Sunbreak trailer. Yeah. Even though they didn't, show, they didn't like, give him a name tag, he, they show him in, like, a second clip, but you see the Hermit Crab guy. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I knew he was in the game. And my point is, let's say I didn't know. I want to get hyped when I see him. Like, oh, shit, this fucking asshole. Um, so anyway, I watched the showcase and when I saw the jungle map, I got so fucking happy because that tells me that there is more than one map that they're adding. They add it. We already know the one map they're adding. Now we know there's a jungle map. Maybe that's it, but maybe there's more. Maybe they add yeah, the fucking ancient, the ancient lands or whatever. With Iceborne, there was only one actual map added. Two of you count the guiding lands, but the guiding lands was actually... 
It was just um, all the maps in one, right? All the maps in one. And they it was different though. Like it wasn't like they took an actual spot out of each map and added it to one big map. They basically said this is the wasteland, and it looked like the wasteland area, which is the desert. It looked like the wasteland, but it wasn't anything that you could go to the wasteland map by itself and say, Oh, this is just that spot from the wasteland. It was a it was a completely yeah, 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 new yeah, part. Yeah. Wasteland, but it was still just yeah, so it was new in that way, like, oh, this doesn't actually exist on the wasteland map. But the theme of it being a desert and an oh, actual wasteland was yeah, still yeah. there. And you can clearly tell, oh, this is the fort. This is the ancient forest, right? Yeah. Uh, so that it was cool in that way. But at the same time, I don't know that that doesn't really just count as a map to me. Like it, it just it didn't feel like a map also because the things you fought there, they had different drops. The drops they gave you were not the materials and everywhere. But the guiding lands, the monsters dropped their regular parts. So you could build their armor weapons with guiding lands drops were specific things that only you can get in the guiding lands and they were mainly used for creating talismans or a uh, layered weird. armor which is full which is cool because the end game was layered armor yeah, yeah and stuff yeah. like that like that was the, the end game was basically layered armor and layer weapons you could do both and i hope that they do the same thing in some break where you can layer anything because in rise you can layer a rampage weapon which apparently rampages are done with there's no rampages in some break that is a rise thing only they replaced it completely with something else. So I'm, I'm actually not mad at that because the rampage is like, if you want to do a ramp all the way up, I, I guarantee they're going to have some new rampages. I mean, maybe they won't, but we'll see. no, they said they blatantly said they're rampages. They, I must've, I must've missed them saying that. Yeah. Ra the rampage is a thing of, uh, of Rise, the Magnamalo frenzy virus, or whatever that was going on with him. Okay. Whatever, whatever cool. Magnamalo had going on. I mean, now, rampages are fun. It's just like, I can only, I only want to do them like, like, let's say you and me are hunting and we're, we, yeah. let's say we do a hunt five days a week, right? Like every day after work, boom, we're hunting, right? Uh, it's like, I can do a rampage like once a day. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to do, I don't want to yeah. have a whole session where we're doing rampage shit. Yeah. I, uh, I feel like this. I don't mind the option, yeah. but I don't want to have to do many of them. They're not the funnest quest to do because they're they don't feel like anything else so that's a that's a good and a bad thing for them yeah it's like when you want to get away from hunting for a second you do a rampage because it feels so different from hunting but after the novelty it wears then real quick you know it, what i you know it, this is me i don't know this i guess is a it defeats the point of what it is but we talked about this before one of my biggest problems with the rampage is i feel like it belittles the monsters because like I'm That's fighting, what I think too. I'm fighting thirty of these big ass monsters, and it's kind of like it just belittles them. Like it's just yeah. Like when you see two Rathalos on screen, it doesn't feel as intimidating as seeing two Rathalos in a quest per yeah, se. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they would be two Rathalos and 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 high rank would be ridiculous. I've been fighting with my friend. We've been ranking up because he just started the game, let's say a month ago. So I've been trying to get him ready for some break. And we got to the point where he got he's in high rank now, so we got him the Rathalos armor. I think it's the best armor to start hunt high rank off. And apparently, as soon as you get the high rank, as long as you have a host, someone can host a quest for you for hunter rank seven and hunter yeah, rank eight stuff. You can do whatever you want, yeah. So I started hosting Rathalos, and you know, a fireball hit me. Now I haven't played Rise since last year up until <laughs> this point. And a fireball hit me, and it did so much damage to me. And I was thinking about, oh God, if he gets hit, he's getting one shot it. Because <laughs> it just took a great amount of my health. And that made me immediately fear Rathalos again. Like, as I was getting into the hunt, I was like, well, I have end game armor. I have end game equipment. You yeah. know, I'm using everything. I, all my shit's maxed out. I'm thinking I'm just going to go in and not have to really think as I play. Yeah, just kind of hit at, shit. But as I was getting hit, I was like, huh, I need to be more careful because I can actually die, which would be pretty embarrassing considering I'm supposed to be the veteran here, even though I'm rusty. But still, so I had to take some time to just like study the monster again, get my positioning back down, get my timings back down. And, you know, once I got it back, I got it back. I was like riding a bike. But there was a moment where I had genuine fear of Rathalos. And when you do a rampage and you just can hit them for literally thousands of damage with the gong bangs, yeah. or you can just shoot them out of the sky with this artillery that you have scattered all around the arena. It does take away from the greatness of the monsters. Like even Rajang, I'm not scared of a Rajang at all in a rampage. Yeah, because he's just kind of there and does a thing. I think something that would have been interesting to do with the rampage is if instead of it being 30 big monsters showing up, 
if they used the little monster. So let's say you have like an Arzuros and a Great Azuchi come through, right? You could have two two big monsters that way, but then yeah. there's also like a bunch of little Azuchis, like a yeah. bunch of them that wave in. Like that would be cool, or like or Jagras and like. I would really like that if the game could handle that. I don't think yeah, the game yeah, could yeah. handle that personally. I think there would be a lot of frame drops because, as you know, that one map, the flooded florist or whatever it's yeah, called, yep. dash that map. I'm hoping that they might have um, done something to make it a little bit better in optimize some it. break. Yeah. yeah, optimize it. That's the word I was looking for. I wish I hope that they somehow optimize it better. But I remember fighting Nargakuga even when I was fighting with my friend this week because he, you know, Nargakuga has the best weapons in Rise, so we were fighting Nargakuga a lot. And the frame drops would just be. Uh, he even commented one time. He's like, "My game's kind of in slow motion right now." And I was like, "It's not in slow motion. It's just." So you can't really handle. Let me take that opportunity <laughs> to tell you that I fucking threw a Gatorade bottle against the wall. All right. In like in like hype slash anger. OK, I'm watching the Rise uh, showcase. You know, we're going to skip around. I'm watching the Rise showcase. We get to the end and they show the roadmap. And first of all, I love the roadmap. I'm so happy to see the roadmap. The first fucking monster they show, though, is like Lunescent. <laughs> and i got so fucking angry because i was like i can't escape this monster i was like i guarantee this oh. fucker's weapons are going to be so goddamn good i was like i'm going to just be using nargakuga's greatsword again but the feathers are going to be fucking white and silver i'm going to be pissed off that. i'm going to be so angry bro i feel bad for you because you're probably right and i didn't think about that until you just said it but the oh fact that there's God. a subspecies of nargakuga being the first monster to come out is almost like they're torturing us dude i was so annoyed the community did complain about nargakuga when it came out like when <laughs> rise came out and, and, and everyone realized that narga's weapons were overtuned yep. people started to complain about okay it kind of trivializes everything else there's no other weapon to make even for example I could use other long swords that have elements in them because long sword is an elemental weapon. Technically, like yeah. technically long sword hits fast. It has everything required to be an elemental weapon and no one uses elemental long sword. You'd never see a long sword user using an ice long sword or a fire long sword or anything like that, which is sad. And it's just because Nargas is so overtuned that even with using a monster's four times weakness, I'm using Pokemon terms here, yeah. even with using a monster's four times weakness, it still doesn't matter. Narga will out damage it. And yeah. that is so fucking frustrating. Yeah. Narga so Kuga's to see weapons this guy. Absurd. To see this guy, the lucid Narga Kuga, I think it's called, which I don't, I, I know I had to have fought it, but I, I literally. Th I think they said it was, a, no, Narga. I think they said it was a new, I think they said that's a new Narga Kuga. I think. It's not, it's not, it's not. Oh, it's not? And okay. always, and always I, I must have misunderstood that. what they said. No, no, no. So. It's not that you misunderstood. I don't know how much detail. I don't remember if I'm being honest, how much detail they put into saying what exactly it was. But when I went, I'm in a monster Hunter Facebook group and everyone in the group was posting pictures and saying like, Oh, he's back. He's back. I was like, I know that there was, there's this other Nargakuga from one of the games and he was called like Silverwind Nargakuga, yeah. but I don't remember Lucent Nargakuga. And everybody was like, Oh, he's, he's not okay. And all this other stuff. So apparently he's a returning monster. I assume as long as he wasn't at Monster Hunter Frontier, because I didn't play Monster Hunter Frontier. Uh, yeah. I think Frontier is the one that's region locked. You have to do something special to even get into the servers. Oh yeah, it's one. It's it's like an online thing. Yeah, I, I've never played Frontier. I've never played Monster Hunter Frontier. Uh, so Monster Hunter Frontier, if he was from that one, I didn't play it, and maybe that's why I don't recognize him. But if he was from maybe like Monster Hunter Second Portable, I played that when I was literally a young teenager on my PSP when we hacked our PS or installed Homebrew on our PSPs and downloaded english patches to play the japanese versions of the game and all that stuff that's yep. so far that's almost 20 years ago now like actually yeah, it's, a, it's, a it's closer it's closer to 20 years ago now than it is to not being 20 years ago yes yeah. uh so i don't remember lucent Nargakuga. so i'm excited to fight this new monster and there's apparently for the first time ever monsters from monster Hunter frontier which again i've never fought i don't know anything about them yeah there are monsters from monster Hunter frontier in this game that I literally that's, I know nothing about I know nothing really about cool. them. Yeah, so I mean Lucent Nargakuga looks cool and I'm excited for new monsters, new subspecies. They confirm they're gonna have like subspecies and powered up versions throughout the the roadmap of what's coming out. I just got like a little annoyed because I was like, oh my god. It's yeah. Sunbreak's gonna come out, Nargakuga weapons are gonna be over overtaken. 
But then a month later, or whenever the release date is, they're going to come out loose at Nargakuga, and his weapons are just going to be fucking better than everyone, and we're all going to be using Nargakuga weapons all over again. You are probably spot on with that, and honestly, if they look like Nargakuga weapons with a different color, I'm going to be mad. Yeah, my guess, I hope they look different. My guess is that Lucent Nargakuga's greatsword is going to be just Nargakuga's greatsword, but the feathers are going to be fucking silver or whatever. Yeah, that would not be a good look because his weapons don't look that good, which is unfortunate. They just don't. Some of them look okay. His greatsword just doesn't look appealing to me at all when you compare it to the other greatswords in the game because the greatsword, yeah. my other friend who's playing it, Dennis, he sometimes uses Grey Sword, and he likes weapons from the older games when he used to play as a kid on PlayStation 2 and stuff like that in PSP. For example, the Barbaroi Blade has been in almost every monster in the game. It's a Grey Sword, it's red, and at the top of it, instead of it being, it comes to, it doesn't come to a point like most Grey Swords do, it comes to a flat like a hook? edge. And the, wait, yes. is it the one that hooks? Yeah, it hooks, yeah, and it's red. It's a, Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a fire. yeah. That Grey Sword looks cool as shit. So he was like, oh man, I want to use that, and I didn't want to be a killjoy, but I wanted to be honest. So I was like, you can use it, and that's fine. However, it is so bad compared to the best Other great sword ones. in the game. Yeah, that's that's all I want. Like, I'm okay, and we said this before, I'm so okay with there being a best weapon. I just want, like, let's say the, like, right now the highest rank for weapons is, like, rank 7 or rank 8, whatever yeah. it is. But let's say it's rank 7. I just want all the rank 7 weapons to be similar in tier, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. there could be a best one. I yes. just want the second, third, and fourth best one to not be, like, a wide gulf behind it. Yeah, for example, I think, uh, so there was a period when we first got Rise, and everyone hadn't already crunched all the numbers and figured everything else out yet, where, what's the, uh, the ice monster's name, who has the really cool-looking greatsword? Gossarag. Gossarag's greatsword was in contention for, like, best greatsword in the game as well, and that was really cool, because I actually like the way that one looks. I love that sword. I think it looks amazing, and... It is pretty close to Narga. Now, granted, when you have endgame gear and you have everything maxed out, it it yeah, it doesn't compete. But you're not missing out on so much damage that you'll kill a monster five minutes later than I will. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's not it's not worse. that bad. It's it's yeah, it's it's a little worse. The, I think where Narga Kuga just gets off at is that it has slots, it has affinity. It's too much. It's like too much. Uh and when you're just trying to be optimal. You know, I'm a min-maxer. I, I like to play games min-maxer. That's just how I am. But I also prefer fashion hunting as well. I like to hunt and look nice, which is why I use layered armors exclusively. Uh, I would like if they do the same thing they did in Iceborne, where every weapon in a game can be layered. And yeah. I feel like that's just... That that will happen, actually. I'm just going to put it out there. That's just going to happen because I think that that... Honestly, that made the endgame for Iceborne so good when you just wanted to see... Like, oh, I have this, I have a Rajang, my, my hammer is Rajang's because when you charge it, the Rajang hammer spikes up and goes Super Saiyan. Yeah. And seeing that in World made it the best hammer to me in the game. There was no hammer better than that, just because it did that, that little extra effect it had. So no matter what hammer I was using, no matter how great it was, I wanted it to look like Rajang's. And having the ability to get it by farming the Guiding Lands and fighting all these hard-ass monsters that can damn near one-shot you was worth it. It was worth it. Something, Something that I do wish there was, like, so I also, like, I enjoy min-maxing, but then, like, after, like, right now in Rise, I have, like, pretty min-max, like, the, just about the best great sword build you can have outside of yeah, having I was a, say, you definitely, you definitely have the best great sword build you can have. Yeah, and outside of, like, having a god charm, I have, like, the best build you can have. But then after that, after I have, like, this is the, my min-max build, I, um, like, I have, like, other builds that are, like, as yeah. close to min-max as I can get, but with other weapons. But the point that I'm getting to, and I know this won't really be a thing with Greatsword, but I want it to be a thing for, like, as many weapons as it can be. I like the idea of switching your weapon for a hunt. Like, even outside of you just too. changing the way it looks, I like the idea of being like, well, this monster is weak to ice. I should use an ice sword. Like, that's cool to me. Like, not just this yeah. is the strongest sword. I, I, I want Monster Hunter in general to start caring more about element. <laughs> yeah, like, even with Greatsword, I don't, like, they just need to make it work more. I just think it'd be cool if... Have like, you seen Have you seen the Switch skill thing for Greatsword? Like that little showcase that was like a minute long or something where they showed... I, I, so I don't know if I saw everything. I did see the one. I think it was not this showcase. It was the last one, I think. And if I understood correctly, one of the new Greatsword things is it doesn't charge. It's just like combos. Yes. So that shit, you swing the Greatsword with one hand and you swing it yeah, fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it looked really fucking dope and i think that that i'm hoping now obviously i have no idea the demo doesn't give you any 
You can't see your equipment in a demo. You can't see your status in a demo. You don't have skills in a demo. Demo, you're actually completely vanilla. You just have one armor. You have a weapon. You can't see anything. And you actually just don't have skills at all. You can just tell. Like, I don't have quick sheath when I use longsword, which actually fucked up my timing a lot when I yeah, first started. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. When I first started streaming last night, bro, I got hit by everything. And it's because I I didn't realize it, but you having gotten slow. back into Rise, yeah. yes, it's way slow, too. Having gotten back into Rise and playing with the ultimate gear where everything's maxed, everything is as good as it can be with my longsword. And know, I know the timing, how long it takes me to sheath my weapon and do my counter. So as I'm fighting monsters and I'm going to do my counter, I'm, I'm realizing as it's happening, I don't have enough time to go into that stance. Yeah. And that, that was a thing in itself. But anyway, you don't have skills in the demo. You don't have, you can't see your armor. It's literally grayed out. Your status is grayed out. So you can't tell anything. And the monsters hit. Oh, I'm not going to spoil anything Dude, for Kenny. I laughed so hard, hit. though. I didn't hard. watch much of Fraser's stream because I didn't, I just didn't want to see too much. But yeah. even though I'll probably play the demo anyway, so what's in the demo, I'll probably see. But yeah, I hope that you do at least play the demo. My point play, is, I want to play it with you. I, I turned on Fraser's stream like on my phone when I had a, like, and I just turned it on and I turned it on at a point where <laughs> Fraser was like, yo, that did entirely too much. It was like yes. where I turned on the stream. Yes. And I just started laughing so the hard. The damage? Yeah, and you know what? You told me about there's a Magma Malo and Rise that you can fight, and he is amped out of this world. Yeah, there's an amped Magna Malo you can fight. And apparently in the demo before Rise came out, there was a demo Magna Malo you could fight, and he was outrageous. I didn't fight either of those. I didn't fight the one that's in the actual game. I didn't fight the demo one either. Because I think when Rise's second demo, because they did one demo with the cat bubble thing, right? Like the bubble Mizutsune or whatever. They did mm -hmm. one demo that had that. They didn't release a demo, a second demo for Rise. And it had Magna Malo in it. And I was like, well, at this point, the game is coming out this week, so I'm not playing that. Like, I just, yeah, I yeah, literally yeah. was like, I'm just not, I was like, I'm not playing that. I just didn't fight Magna Malo before he came out. And then when I got the actual game, I fought Magna Malo. And uh, I, I heard that he was cracked out, but I think the problem with him was that you have this timer this unreasonable timer. Yeah. Where it was like, I think on the demo, it was like a 10 minute or five minute timer. Like it it's was like really 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So they have, they have the, the flagship guy that we've seen many times. We even reviewed it on this podcast. Malzino. You can fight Malzino in a demo and they give you 15 minutes. Yeah. It's just like, and, a, and he's amped, right? He's definitely. Oh, cause he, in the, in the, if he, Amp Kenny, then we're in trouble. If he's if that wasn't amped, but we are in trouble. That kind of annoys me though. That annoys me because I want him. Because in the showcase, they said they were like, you can fight a super strong version of Malzino in the demo. Yeah, that annoys me though because I want that to just be how strong Malzino is. Like when me I fight the too. real, that's how hard I want him to be. I want him to be that. But apparently, casual people who play Monster Hunter do not like it when they get difficulty blocked like that, and that's annoying to me. I don't know if there if if there's a solution where maybe everyone can set their difficulty differently. You can only play hunts together with people who have the same difficulty, something like that. Because I will want the Miles Zeno that I fought last night, and I haven't beaten it yet, which is why I want to fight it with you. I haven't I haven't beaten it yet. I'm going to solo it. Probably it won't be won't be tonight because I have to do the you know we're doing the podcast, and it won't be tomorrow because I go to AU. So my weekend, at some point during my weekend, either Friday night or Saturday night, I plan to solo Malzino, and then I want to fight it with a group of people and also beat it then. But it's very hard, and the people who have been clearing it on YouTube have been clearing it with 13 minutes and 23 seconds or literally 20 seconds left. And I think that's really cool. I think mm -hmm. that the fact that it's pushing people to the brink is amazing. And I think the fight is really cool. But I, I want to, like... I wish that he was that hard in the game. I just know that, you know, like they said, he's amped in the demo, but that should just be how he is, in my opinion. Yeah, because when we fight him in the game, we're going to have our equipment. Like, we're going to have we're armor skills. Yeah, we're going to be very comfortable. So it won't be, even if he is a little difficult the first time, I imagine the first time we fight him, he'll still be a little bit hard because I I just assume my Elder Dragon is going to hit pretty decently strong. But he definitely won't be what he is in the demo because well, we just don't have armor skills and we probably have shitty defense like they they definitely gave us armor with shitty defense and that's why we yeah, can't check yeah. it we yeah, cannot yeah, yeah. check the defense so but i i like a challenge i enjoy the fact that the monsters nearly one shot you in the demo and they put it like this challenge is expert you know astalos the other guy his his thing is uh it's i think it's advanced it says or something like that it's an advanced level challenge and it's also difficult i think it's I think Estalos is pretty difficult too, but I don't think he's anywhere near Malzino. I think it's because you're just under your gear is yeah, just yeah. not 
on that level. That's so, so hype. Yeah, it's it's fun. It's fun. I, th- I think you'll have a lot of fun playing the demo. The Great Sword feels really, really good. It's, it's actually a weapon that I used the most last night. Uh, I tried to use the long sword, but I realized that without Quick Sheaf 3, man, long sword is just not all it's cracked up to be. Like I I forgot how I'm gonna just say it, like how bad it is because if you think about it, I've played more of Monster Hunter Rise with Quick Sheaf level three than I yeah, haven't. Without it, of course, yeah. Same, and same so, with Greatsword. Like I, the f- like as quickly as I could, I got focus on my Greatsword. Yep. I got it like from low rank Ajaneth. I don't remember if I had got focus three until high rank, but I had at least focus level two in low rank. Yeah. And uh, playing Greatsword without focus is like really frustrating. Yeah, man. And you know what? I I haven't played Greatsword as much in Rise. Like I played a lot. If you look at my guild card, but. When I was playing the demo last night, I couldn't tell if Focus Level 3 was on the Great Sword. I'm going to say it wasn't. But I literally, when I was using it, I... You haven't played it as much as, as Longsword, so the timing didn't feel... Yeah, awful. it felt... Oh, I was going to ask you this. When you charge up with Rage Slash and Rise, does the screen start shaking? I don't think so. Bro, wait till you play the demo. I don't know what's going on. This is like some new effect they added, or maybe I had my effects turned down. And the options menu on rise, I think I did turn down some animation effects. When I was charging my gray sword last night in the demo, and mind you, you don't have like there's nothing extra on the gray sword that you don't know about in rise. But like when I would just do rage slash, like regular yeah, yeah. rage slash, the screen starts fucking shaking, and it's like visible. Sh- it it makes it hype as fuck. That's <laughs> it interesting. Looks I might have so to, hype. It, that's it, that'd be crazy if that was already in the game, and just because like we turned down screen yeah. shake, it's. That's yeah, I, I, I think I turned something out. off or turned something down because you can actually there is a thing that says uh, effects. You can kind of tone down the effects because it's very rise is very flashy. It's yeah. very flashy. And I might have turned down my effects. But if that's an effect that I turned down, I'm turning that shit back on. Because yeah. <laughs> when I tell you that every time I charged up a rage slash and I got hit by the monster while doing it and then I let go a slash and I should did like a thousand. It felt, yeah, yeah, it felt so good. good. Yeah, dude. That's oh man, Rage Flash is sick. I'm excited to see just everything that happens. Uh, we're only like a week, two weeks away. Um, yeah, we're two weeks away now. I mean, today's the 15th, so literally two weeks, and yeah. it'll be out midnight two weeks from tonight. The game, the game is going to be. It's just there's there's so much in it. I'm looking forward to. I saw in the showcase. I, I mean, I don't know how fun or interesting they'll be, but i did get kind of hyped with like the partner missions where you can go on a mission with like an npc and like i saw that that does look really cool that's interesting they said they replaced rampages with those with the partner missions i like that. I, I like how like the the boss guy has a great sword i was like i knew it i was like that's my guy he's got a great sword. The, it is the like, most classic boy. weapon in all of monster hunter it is the weapon on the fucking first cover of monster hunter one it's yeah. it's the shit it's the shit and i think like in one of the cutscenes they showed it was it was like the head, it was like the Admiral in Sunbreak, and yeah. you're on a mission with him and Fugan the Elder from Rise. I think they're both on a mission together, and they're talking to each other like, That's oh, cool. It's, it's been a long time since we fought side by side, or something. I think they say something like that in the showcase. Let me give you one, before we switch off to the next thing, let me give you one piece of advice. When you do play the demo, if you play it with or without me the first time, uh, you can adjust your switch skills as soon as the game starts, basically. And I advise that you do because the Great Sword has this stupid move called Guard Tackle. Oh my god, Guard Tackle is trash. <laughs> it's so bad. And I didn't know until last night when I was about to go to sleep at like 1 a.m. I stopped the stream and I got off. But before that, I realized like, oh, you're not forced to play with the exact setup that Capcom gives you by default. Yeah. And they give you, uh, they set up your character with the switch skills they want you to have, I guess. But you can just change them. Yeah, so, guard tackle. I do not. There's like some people that like guard tackle a lot. I think guard tackle is really bad. What's so good there about was it one instance where it was cool. Is it because if you do a successful guard tackle, you instantly go to your final charge. You instantly go to like true charge slash. So if you do like yep. a, a guard tackle, like and successfully do it, you'll instantly skip everything and go to true charge slash. Like that's cool and everything, but it's it's so clunky and just like. It's very clunky. It just and also, work. it it's... repositions the fuck out of you. Yeah, I, I don't like it. I don't know if I can... Maybe if I'm not holding a direction, I won't charge forward so far, but I don't like how my character moves with the greatsword. And the whole thing about greatsword, I think greatsword is probably the weapon where positioning matters the absolute most. I can say that with confidence, actually. 
I think positioning on a great sword is the most important thing out of any weapon out of all 14. If you ever watch any speedruns or any top level players of Monster Hunter, they literally position themselves so perfectly to do crazy shit. And for you to move me out of my spot when I'm trying to avoid damage, which is very important, and I have to do that, uh, it's really annoying. So I found it very obnoxious every time it happened, and I never turned it off until the end of the night when I realized, oh, wait, I don't have to use this. Yeah. So the next time I play, Gracer will feel even better to me because I will be putting on regular tackle, and oh, wow. I can get to my true charge slash and stuff on my own by tackling twice. Like, yeah, it's yeah. not not hard and and uh, normal tackles faster and has less end lag like yep. our tackle everything about is just... it everything about it so you can change that so as soon as you get in change that shit for my long sword same thing my long sword setup that they gave me to start the game off with it's awful not only just not having quick sheath level three but uh in general the feeling of some of the moves they had i was like this is a choice this is a fucking choice this is a choice yeah this is a choice it just wasn't good Did, were anyway. any of the options the new options okay. or was it all the old options no they give you new options there's okay, definitely cool. that's cool so what's interesting is that so they showcased all 14 weapons during the past couple weeks they do like these little uh minute and 30 second clips to show like oh this is this new switch skill that this weapon's gonna have and this is new whatever and the ones they showed in those little showcases are not all in the demo, which is actually kind of cool. So I was expecting the gray sword. When I got to the gray sword, the first thing I wanted oh, to do was start swinging at do the combo one. I wanted to start swinging with one hand, and that just yeah, yeah. it's not it's not available. So I guess it's something that we'll have to unlock, which that's great. Yeah, dude, like that that is great. I'm so excited for the fact that there's going to be more switch skills, but also the fact that you can like create two loadouts and switch between the mid hook. Yep. Like that is going to be so sick because even outside of whatever new shit they give me, the fact that I can use Rage Slash for like the normal part of the hunt, but then when the monster gets knocked down, like do a flip switch in the True Charge Slash. <laughs> oh my, that is going to be so sick. I wait till you. Oh man, I can't wait to play it. It when you first do that switch skill shit and do the, the evade with it, and your character, if your weapon wasn't out and you do the evade, they automatically ready their weapon. It is so fire looking. Oh like, man. The stance you get in and every it is so fire. Capcom did something really cool with this. I like it. That dude, I really like it. Rise, and new maps, the flash, dude. New maps. I really hope that there's going to be even more new maps. If there's not, I'll, I'm happy. But if there's even more, I really want to see. Just because I'm nostalgic for it, even though I didn't grow up playing Monster Hunter a lot, I, you know, yeah. I only dabbled with it. But I'm still nostalgic for the original first map of the original Forest Monster Hills. Hunter. I want I that map wouldn't. so bad. Bro, I don't honestly, why not? Like, right? That would get so much hype if we got the original Forest and Hills with that original song, but just, you know, changed oh, up for man. 2022. In, in this big open world environment. Big like, open oh, world. Oh, it'd be that, so good. That whole map was beautiful, too. It was. It really was. So, you know what? It could be a surprise. I, I would love that, man. I would love I just, that. I'm hoping. And I, you know, I'm I'm aware that they are, but I'm hoping that they are holding things back. Yeah. Like, yeah. don't blow the load completely. Like, hold something back. Hold a little bit back. That's why, yeah, that's why I always get scared. Like, I don't want them to show me all the monsters because it's like, I don't want you, because I heard, luckily, I wasn't excited for Rise before Rise came out. Yeah. So I missed all of this. But I heard before Rise came out, they showed every single monster that was in Rise except, like, one. I, yeah. I heard, like, every through trailers they had like monster trailers yeah and they showed every single monster that was in rise and like that would have annoyed me like trying to avoid seeing all of them. i so me we're we're different in this respect i don't mind seeing some of the monsters or whatever especially the new ones like when a new monster in the game is coming out and they do a trailer and it's for magnum Allo, for rise they was like oh there's this frenzy thing and you saw this big ass yeah, yeah. dog looking thing walking forward i like that that's what cool I, I agree that's cool what i don't like I don't want to see gameplay of the fight with. The, like, I want to see those CG scenes. The CG with the new yeah. monster is fine with me. Like I'm fine with seeing Magnum Allo and CG with the frenzy thing. And it's like, okay, that's Magnum. I don't want to see people in game fighting Magnum Allo and seeing all his attacks and how to beat him and stuff like that. I don't want that. And I really, and this is the one that really gets me. I do not want to see the monster's fucking armor. Yeah, the game. I do not want to see the armor. But to like, me. That bothers me more than any, like seeing the armor because that was the main thing. Like the armor and the weapon of the monster is the main thing about the game. Showing the armor and the weapon is very annoying. Like, for example, when Sunbreak was shown, I'm hyped to see Malzino. Them showing off Malzino yes. and like Garen yes. Golem or whatever and uh, 
and Luna Gold, and whatever the fuck his name is. Yeah, Luna Garen. Yeah, but, yeah. Like, seeing those three monsters, and, like, whether true or not, putting together, like, oh, it might be, like, a Halloween-type theme, like, yeah. horror theme, Frankenstein, werewolf, and uh, vampire. Seeing that is cool, but then it's like, all right, I don't need to see any more monsters. Like, you show yeah, me I don't those wanna... three, it's like, I don't need I... to see any more. I literally could have just done with those three, and that would have got me so... I mean, I was hyped when I saw them, and that's enough for me. I, I also like that, uh, I think, up till this point, Okay, they definitely have showed some gameplay of Malzino before because I remember seeing one of his attacks. But when you fight him, there's mm. nothing quite like <laughs> the actual fight. Uh, they, you know, when they show those gameplay, and they showed it really quickly too. They would just show him like doing one little thing, and then it would go off, and it'd be like Monster Rise Sunbreak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You actually fight him. He does so much <laughs> that they just <laughs> never showed. So the fight itself is a huge surprise, and a testament to that is literally my stream last night. You could tell that I was genuinely shocked constantly <laughs> I, and i'm on the internet all the time so like if there's something that comes out i typically do see it the fact that i had no idea that he does some of these mechanics and some of these attacks and stuff like that i genuinely was like what the fuck that's so like, sick yeah i was losing my shit and i hope that i have that same feeling with a lot of the other monsters yeah 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 that's what i'm hoping man i want to i'm really excited to see monsters come back i want to see I, I don't know this is stupid i guess because like these aren't the big monsters but i still like seeing them I would love for them to bring uh, whatever the little hyena guys are, the new little hyena guys. I want to see a great yeah. version of that, even though it would be like the same tier as like a Zeus. Oh, like Velocidrome and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to see those, like the great Jagras. Like, yeah, I, yeah. You know, I like seeing those Yeah, Velasa. you know what's interesting? They show Velasa Prey. There's Velasa Prey in like I did the... see that in one of the trailers. Yeah, there's Velasa Prey in the trailer, and there's Velasa Prey in the jungle, I think, and on the map. I would assume... That Velocidrome is in the game, even though it so. is kind of random that Velocidrome is in the game. But he's, I'm not... he's such a low tier monster, but he, I still. But he's a classic. He's a classic. Yeah, I really want to see him. And I mean, just like how high rank Great Azuchi, I didn't lose to him, but high rank Great Azuchi, like, especially when you're using low rank armor, he catches you off guard. You're like, oh, he does shit. catch you off guard. So, and he has new attacks. So if you fight a G rank uh, Velocidrome early on in G rank, like, you know, that could still. You know, yeah. he could still be a fight. No, I, I like that. Uh, I like that G ranked monsters have new attacks in every monster game. So your low rank monster, you know, they do whatever. Then high rank, they get one or two new things, and then in G rank, they get another one or two new things. Yeah. And come when you compound all those things plus the damage scaling and all of that stuff, it makes it like the fight is so unique. So I, I'm a fan of monsters, you know, evolving essentially over time and. Uh, also, bringing back something like Velocidrome would be really cool because he is the first, one of the first quests you do in Monster Hunter One, like the very first one, is fight a Velocidrome. That is one of yep. the first quests you do. So if Velocidrome is back, that's just a really nostalgic thing to have back. It'd be yeah. cool. Would be cool. I like shit like that. All right. So they also did reveal a little about Street Fighter Six. Uh, new characters, Luke and Jamie. I Dude, Jamie looks so fucking cool. Jamie's the drunken guy, right? He yes. Has a little... Jamie is sick. He's got dr like a drunken boxing style, but yes. also like I don't know pseudo capoeira stuff in there too. Like yeah. Jamie looks so cool. So I was watching actual gameplay of Street Fighter Six, and it was really cool because it was Jamie versus uh, Ryu, and they show that Jamie has these four little drink things under his health, and I guess it's like taunt or something, but you can choose to take a drink. During a fight, now you're vulnerable when you do it. It's really quick, but you're still vulnerable, so do doing it is a commitment, so you have to look for an opening. But after he gets to four, he kind of goes into this unlocked awaken mode where his hair, his hair is naturally in a, like a tied up ponytail. He has really long hair. It's a really long ponytail. Yeah. But when you take four drinks, his hair completely comes out the ponytail. It's all over his face, and he starts moving really <laughs> drunkenly and really cool. It's and his skin changes to like this really dark reddish color. Yeah. Uh just to kind of symbolize that he's drunk, I guess. You know, like when you <laughs> you drink, you get a little red red undertone. Yeah, he looked really cool and his moves do more damage, his combos get crazy. He gets like this shadowy effect to his attacks. So I thought that was amazing. I hope they do that with more characters and not just him. Uh, but the gameplay did look really smooth. And one thing I credit Street Fighter for is showing full fluid motions. In the attack strings for the newer games, like these yeah. last couple, these last couple games, they don't shortcut the animations when you do attacks. You see the character do the full range of motion, and it makes it look so realistic when they do stuff. So I like that a lot. It does look really good. Street Fighter Six, 
I I saw a lot of info on it. Like there's the single player open world mode, which I thought was so weird. But single player is going to have like an open world mode where you run around the world as a street fighter. Yeah. I, I don't know what that's going to be, but that, I mean that looks kind of interesting and. The mechanics, the way the game looks, looks actually really good. And I want to say I'm cautiously really excited. Because most Street Fighter games are really good. Street Fighter, all the Alpha 1, 2, 3, Third Strike, Street Fighter 4. I like all of these games. I just really don't like Street Fighter 5. There's a lot of Street Fighter 5 stuff that I just didn't enjoy, didn't have fun with. Don't like 5. And, you know, you're only as good as as your last game, right? Yes. Street Fighter 5 was not it for me, even after the patches. (laughs) So six, it's like everything they're shown for six. I'm so fucking hype, but I'm still like tethered. skeptical. I'm still tethered just because of Street Fighter Five. But all of the other Street Fighters, for the most part, are good. So like six, is, six is looking really good. Yeah, what's up? How long has it been since Five came out? Has it been like five years? Five came out. I want to say in like 2013 or 2014. Oh no, it's been almost ten years. I think it was like 2014. Maybe it was okay. 15. So it's it's old as shit. Five is pretty old. It came out. I think it was like 2014, I want to say. Yeah, I guess that does make sense that it would be that far in between games because they're only on Street Fighter 6, for God's sake. And Street yeah. Fighter's been out since I was a baby, an actual baby, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I want to uh, say 5 came out 2014. I, I think 2014 sounds about Okay, right. so Street Fighter games live for a very long time. Like, they, yeah, yeah, the time yeah. in between a Street Fighter game is almost the same think, amount of time as between generations of consoles. I think Street Fighter 4 came out in like 2006 like street fighter yeah. 4 i want to say it was like 2006 maybe like 2008 i bet i could find a little release calendar oh uh, yeah for sure street fighter release dates let me see if i can find something street fighter okay so street fighter the very first one 1987 street fighter 2 1991 street fighter alpha 1995 uh, Street Fighter EX 96, Crossover Series, whatever that is, 96, Street Fighter 3, 97, Street Fighter 4, 2008, Street Fighter 5, 2016, Street Fighter 6, 2023. Okay. So a little bit later than I thought, but still a little later, but not yet. So it's still seven years before six will be out yeah. uh, between 2016 to 2023 is seven years. So seven years between five and six but between four and five is eight years. Yeah, yeah. 2008 to 2016. That's just straight up eight years. And between three and four, 97 to 2008 is 11 years. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, Street Fighter games can be pretty... I mean, they literally, like I said earlier, they kind of come out with generations of consoles they, they at that do, point. They do. I mean, Street Fighter... Yeah, I mean, cause Street Fighter 5 came out on the PS4. Because, yeah, Street Fighter 3... I mean, 4 came out at the PS3, and then it went in the PS4, and then, like, Street Fighter 5 came out on the PS4. And- yep. And 6 will be out on 5, and et cetera. Yeah, so that's a good way to keep track of it. It's kind of, in my head, like, uh, every Nintendo, every Smash Bros. is on one console, right? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. There's one Smash Bros. per Nintendo major console. Like, Street Fighter 7 won't be out on the PS5. Correct. The, ju- judging by the way things are going. Which is cool because that gives them time to like because like Street Fighter Five has become a better game since release over the yeah. last seven years. It's still not really my game. There's still things about it that I don't enjoy, but it has become a better game in the last. I I now own it. I told myself I would never own Street Fighter Five, um, just because when it first came out, it burned <laughs> me really bad. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I was like, I'll never buy this game. So, but recently, randomly, there was like a Capcom sale on Steam out of nowhere, and I got. All the Devil May Cries, Street Fighter V, uh, Bionic Commander, and Strider, and Monster Hunter World. I got all of those games for $20. And I was like, well, I mean... Oh my god, that's I like, insane. I was like, I guess if Street Fighter V just... Because here's the thing. I would buy Monster Hunter World for $20. Yes. They, they also gave me Street Fighter V, all the Devil May Cries, Bionic Commander, and Strider. So I was like, sure, I'll take it. Man, I can't wait till the day we play World. I... <laughs> <laughs> when that thing, I cannot wait. I'm, down I'm definitely going to play it. I, I was actually, because I now own it, I was going to boot it up, but I stopped myself from booting it up. I was like, I'm just going to wait 
because in two weeks sunbreak comes out i don't want to yeah. get in the world and like yeah yeah let's do it after let's do it when we're completely done with sunbreak yeah and yeah. like you're done with xenoblade and stuff like all the other games you want to play exactly hopefully hopefully the gaming industry gives us a bit of a break around maybe let's say the holidays or like october september sometime around then yeah at some point break. at some point there'll be a drought somewhere and that's yes. where i can slot in other games and i can like slot yeah. in world or whatever I would I would definitely run through world again starting over because I'll be doing it on Steam so I won't have my data and that'll just be really fun for me to to play that again. Um, but yeah, that that would be cool. So Street Fighter Six, I did see some gameplay. It looked nice, as I said. They're also doing some uh, Capcom fighting collection. It's yeah, you have yeah. like Red Earth, Hyper Street Fighter Two, Bob Darkstalker games, all coming out as well as a little package deal. So I like when when old games like that that everyone used to love. Maybe you loved a couple of them, but not all of them. They just put them all together and say, fuck it, give us 30 bucks. And you can just literally have all of them. They also think you could buy them separately, which I thought was cool too. Yeah. I like the Capcom fighting collection. I just wish, cause they know how much everybody wants dark stalkers. I also think that, I guess they don't believe in it. I understand that it's a bit harder nowadays to just like make games that, that you're not a hundred percent sure are going to like sell super well, but I really do think dark stalkers would sell really well. Like, I think if they made a new Darkstalkers, the character designs are really cool in Darkstalkers. Like, everybody knows Morgan. I was going to say, is that where Morgan comes from? Yeah, Morgan's from Darkstalkers. Everybody knows her. Everybody knows Felicia. Everybody knows hot girls sell games. But aside mm-hmm. from them, they have really, they have other characters that are just really fucking cool looking. And they and they all have, like, this Halloween monster theme. So if they make a really sick looking new Darkstalkers game, and they're just smart about it, they release it around October... I think it's going to sell well. Like you released that game around October. You just made me think about something. Uh, So the theme of Sunbreak is definitely some kind of Halloween horror night type shit. Yeah. And it would be really cool if one of the layered armors you could get, I kind of did the Sonic and uh, the Mega Man and all that stuff. It would be cool if Morgan is for like the girls, they can be Morgan and maybe the guys can be one of the other characters who is in the game. That's like really well known. Dimitri is cool as shit. Yeah, it would be really... I assume he's a vampire of some sort. Yeah. That name sounds like a vampire name. But yeah, that would be really cool if layered armors for... I guess the weird thing is that there is no recent Darkstalkers game to reference, per se. But like, the Mega Man that you got as layered armor for your cat or whatever is definitely not recent either. It's definitely like the first Mega Man. Yeah, so like, fuck it. Just throw that shit in there. Like yeah, also, be... like there hasn't been a new Amaterasu game, but there's you can get Amaterasu the dog as layered armor for your dog. Yeah, no, that's so. that's definitely really cool to me. That and that, it's on theme. It's on theme with this whole horror night shit they got going on. Uh, also, they had the Capcom Arcade Arcade Stadium, thirty two yeah, arcade a... titles with improved quality of life. Yeah, that's something that came out a while ago. The original one, I think they said this is like a, a new one. Uh, that's yeah. a, that's pretty cool too. Yeah, I I. I... I always said if I ever got super super rich or something, oh you know, yeah, huge house, I would definitely have an arcade room where it's yes. actually arcade games. Same. Like the setup, I, I just something about. So this is lost now. Th- these aren't even a thing anymore, really. I think most arcades in the country are gone. Like there's just a lost. The ones thing that are general. left are just casinos for kids. Like I got so fucking annoyed. I went to an arcade. This is a couple years ago. But I went to an arcade, yeah. but all of the games were just like ticket games like games yeah. where you are trying to get tickets yeah. in order to buy something from the counter there's no like you can't just play tekken 3 or whatever the newest yeah tekken is. yeah remember how we talked about uh house of the dead and stuff like that yeah yeah that experience that we had about having to rush and get coins out while i'm still shooting and fighting for my fucking life like the stuff like that is is lost on today's world and i i don't know i really just liked the old feeling of going to an arcade that's one of the things from the 90s that I grew up on, I guess, and I'm just, you know, feel really nostalgic about, and I wish that it was still a thing. Like I think ar- actual arcades. Yeah, I think arcades could still, I think the problem is obviously, right, that it's hard to get somebody to want to go and, like, go somewhere else. Yes. And then pay, like, quarters, and, you know, they're, I doubt it would cost one quarter anymore, but to p- pay basically quarters to fucking play this game, and et cetera, right? Yeah. But you could still make arcades work if you just, Make it so that you pay fifteen dollars to just go in, and you can just play whatever you want. You can just hang yep. out, and you just play whatever you want. Or you make it like this could be kind of funny. It would a thought that I had one time would be that you you essentially have these coins, right? And the coins function like quarters. Maybe you even make them look like quarters, but you 
put like different logo on it. But yeah. so essentially, the the co- the coins are infinite, right? Like you don't have you you pay the fifteen dollars, you go and they give you a, a sack of coins. So you still got to put the coins in to like do the thing. And if you run out of coins, you got to like run back to the counter to get more coins. Well, you don't actually have to pay them more money for it, <laughs> but you got to like go back to the like to create the experience. You got to go get yeah. more coins. Uh, and then like I don't know, that could be a really fun experience where the coins yeah. themselves you're not paying for, and you can get as many as you want, but. They like they they only give you like two dollars worth of coins. So you only get like eight coins. And when you go through them all, you got to like run back to the counter to get more coins or something. Like I, that could be a really fun experience. But you just pay money to be in the area, and you can play any of the games you want. Uh, yeah, arcades are cool. just not a thing anymore. It's kind of crazy. I genuinely remember as a kid going to arcades after movie theaters. We would go to see a movie, and then right across from the movie theater in yeah. Philadelphia, there would be an arcade called GameWorks Studios. And you go in there, it'd be loud as hell. Yep. You see all these flashing lights. It's very dark look, dark room. And you, just, you know, outside of that, Street Fighter, Tekken. There would be a. Uh, this is before VR was really big. There'd be a thing where you could play Tekken Tag Tournament, but it would be virtual reality. So yep. you'd have to do like you, you'd crouch and your character would crouch, and you do a jumping kick and the character would do a jumping kick. I thought that was really cool. I think, dude. I honestly think. At, so look at the nostalgia market of the world right now. Everything's getting yeah. remade, et cetera. Everything is nostalgia. There's right a now. huge nostalgia market. I honestly don't understand. Like, I get it's a bigger commitment, like buying a fucking building real estate for this. But I yeah. think you can really hit it off with the idea I had where like with the coins and you pay to be in there. And it's just like an 80s arcade. Like you, you play 80s music in there the whole time. And there'd be games in there not from the 80s, but you put it like in an 80s aesthetic with like the lights and the music. But, you know, there's, like, Tekken 7 in there. Or, yeah. or you could even have, like, games from the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. But, like, th- my point is the aesthetic is 80s, but there's a bunch of other games in there. It's just, like, an arcade hangout spot. You can get food. Uh, it's just, like, a cool little hangout spot. Maybe they, like, play movies in the back. Uh, I don't know. You could do some crazy shit. Like, make it a drive-in theater, and then inside is an arcade, and you could, like, hang out in your car outside and watch a movie. I don't fucking know, man. But I think that <laughs> shit... <laughs> could be like successful yeah somebody can figure something out it's yeah i know that they're trying to you know when it started the pandemic amc was on its way out and the idea of movie theaters was on its way out and i guess there was a point in my life where i never thought that arcades would be extinct but they're kind of becoming and they're at least an endangered thing right now for yeah. sure I mean, like arcades are endangered they're on life support. yeah they're on life support they're almost extinct and uh the same way we said kenny and i have both said there's nothing quite like the movie theater experience. I guess having an in-home theater is cool, right? I've I've gone to several places that have in-home theaters. Uh, and, it you know, that's decent, right? You can have your friends and it's very intimate and you guys can watch a movie. But there is still nothing quite like going to the movie theater, getting absolutely destroyed on the price of snacks, and then sitting there and watching a movie and being, you know, surrounded by people that you do not know, hearing random commentary sometimes throughout the movie, when it's not obnoxious, you know, when it's warranted, and it can be very funny and entertaining that in that way. Think about overpriced. My heart broke when I went to go see Doctor Strange. I went with two of my brothers. It was my youngest brother, and he's like ten, and my oldest, still younger brother, because I'm the oldest, and he's like twenty one. So we go, and then he goes to give me money, and I'm like, that's whatever, I got it. And so I, I buy my ticket, his ticket, and my youngest brother's ticket, mm-hmm. and the, it was like. I had $30 in my hand, <laughs> ready to reach in my pocket to get maybe five more. The lady was like, it was like $50. I yep. was like, what the fuck? So and I, I had already said, like, don't worry, I got it. So I couldn't turn around and go, yeah, actually. You definitely, <laughs> yeah, you definitely can't do that now. You volunteer at a tribute. I couldn't uh, believe it. I was like, $50 for three so tickets. I realized a couple years ago, when they were doing movie pass movie pass is no longer a thing, but it was this service that you pay $10 a month and you could see a movie a day, every single day. You could see a movie a day and you just pay $10 a month. This shit was so wild. So I signed up for it and it actually was legit. And I saw infinity war like six times and they eventually got rid of it. Uh, I think they got sued or something. Something happened, but obviously it wasn't sustainable, but then AMC, I, I just, think a nerd okay, head, they thought, We'll just make all our money from popcorn. Like, I guess they just figured if you're coming in every day to take yeah. advantage of this, you're going to be spending however much money on well, popcorn. Well, that is true. It's kind of, it's kind of, that that does work too. A lot of locals, you know, we play Yu Gi Oh! and stuff like that, other games. 
when you go to a local, they don't make, they're not keeping the lights on by you guys paying for tournament entry. Not at all. Like that by itself, because when you, we pay for tournament entry, one, you get packs, right? So if I pay $10 for entry, I get at least two packs. And then on top of that, when I win anything, I win product. So that's something that the store paid. That shit's not free. The store paid for that. So they're not keeping their lights on by just getting people's tournament entry. It's also the fact that I'm in the store. I'm now buying water. I'm buying snacks. You know, I'm just buying things. I'm buying sleeves. And over, you know, over the course of being in a store, like you're just going to naturally buy things in the store, which does contribute to keeping the lights on in a building. Same thing with uh, movie theaters and how they how they expect to make money. A lot of it has to be the concession thing because it's marked up. Yeah, it's like I think, a club with alcohol, right? Like alcohol does not actually cost three hundred dollars for a bottle of Casamigos. Uh, no, it doesn't, dude. I oh my god, it to me it is so fucking funny because I've worked at, I've worked in a lot of bars. I'm currently working in a bar, and it's so funny to me. Like a double of premium vodka is like fourteen dollars, and it's like it's so like you're paying fourteen dollars for half a glass of liquor, and then the rest of it's Coke. And it's just that is crazy. To me. Like so, and the crazy. club is way worse. It's <laughs> way worse than the club. Red Bull is legit. I don't know, fifteen bucks. Like a Red Bull can literally be fifteen dollars in a club. A regular can of Red Bull. It's so wild. But you know, what? a bottle of forty dollar alcohol, three hundred dollars. You know crazy. what car shops should do, like AU and stuff. They should just have like you know the little shitty hot dog machine that like 7-Eleven has. Yes, that tastes delicious, by the way. They should all have, like, every card shop should just, because they have snacks and stuff, but inevitably, yeah. everybody goes out to get food somewhere else. Yep. Um, which, that wouldn't stop, but less people would get food other places. If they could I'll tell you this. Dog. There was a time when AU used to have, on Sundays, AU2, they would have pizza uh, at some point during the tournament. They would have, they would order a ton of pizza, like six or seven boxes, and that shit would go so fast that if you took too long to finish a round, there might not be any pizza when you got done. That's okay. how good it because they ordered from a really good spot. There was a place I think it's called well, Omni. Were they charged like a I dollar thought, a slice or something? What were they doing? Yeah, I think it was a dollar twenty five a slice. It wasn't just a dollar. It was definitely a dollar and something. I remember I used to always dig in my pocket for change when I would have change. I'd be like, I don't have any change, but you know, you just keep. I don't want jingles, so just keep the change. If I give him two dollars, just like give me a slice yeah, yeah. and just keep it, whatever. Uh, but I remember getting a slice of pizza and it was because it was there. Yeah. If it wasn't there, I would just, like you said, I would just go and get pizza from somewhere else. But it, because it was in the store it, at my local, it was convenient. I just got done playing my round. I'm turning in the match slip. I was like, fuck it. I'll just get this slice of pizza. If, I, if there was a hot dog stand, some kind of glizzy stand, people would for sure go up for that. A million people percent. Would, people would for sure just be like, you know what? I I normally would not eat this, but because but it's, it's convenient and it's here. Like if there was a, not for me, nachos, if there was something where I could just be like, yo, let me get some nachos yeah. on the fly like that, I love nachos. It's my favorite movie theater snack. So, but yeah. But yeah, there, there's uh, there's something to be said about arcades, but they're bringing back Capcom Arcade Edition. We, that whole tangent was yeah, just yeah, because yeah. we mentioned that. Actually, anyway, they, so there was a brief moment there where we both, like the conversation of that point was done. And so we were yeah. both quiet for like three seconds. And in my head, I was like, how did we get here? Like I, yeah. I was like, I don't even know how we got here. I keep looking over at my list. So the other thing that Capcom revealed in the showcase was something called Exoprimal. And yeah, I, I kind of you know, just like, it looks is, kind of cool, but I kind of just zoned out. I'm like, I don't So this is the one where me and Kenny, this does not speak to me at all. Yeah, I was like, uh, This is not, the, they are not marketing this to me. Maybe people who play games like Overwatch, because it gives me that kind of vibe, I guess. Uh, other you know, those third person team game shooters. There, there was a you point where there was like 400 dinosaurs on the screen. I was like, I don't Literally. know what I'm and, looking at. And they blatantly were showing frame drops, which yeah. I thought was I was, so. I was like, what am I looking at? <laughs> oh, Kenny's not exaggerating when he says. <laughs> They literally showed 400 dinosaurs on screen coming out of portals. And when I tell you that the game itself could not handle it, they were no. showcasing a game that could not handle its own engine. They they really were like they didn't hide it. They they were honest. The shit dropped to like 12 frames a second. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. I was like, what the fuck are they showing me right now? This <laughs> And why? it just did not speak to me. So the premise of the game is that this AI called Leviathan, it's on some Skynet shit. Basically, humans are forced by this AI system to test new weaponry and new exosuits. Mm -hmm. These, you know, cyber looking suits that have all these weapons on them. Humans are forced to test these suits against, for whatever reason, dinosaurs of all things. And these <laughs> dinosaurs 
come out of fucking portals and they just attack you. And after a horde of a couple dinosaurs, a T-Rex will show up. And you guys just have to be on a team where you have a tank, a sniper, a guy who's in the vanguard who kind of just goes out in front lines. You have a team comprised of four different people and you fight against these fucking dinosaur things. But it looks a mess. It's it, very it chaotic looks like looking. Such a mess. If the game's free to play, I'll try it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I'm if it not... was free to play, for sure. It gives me House of the Dead vibes, but not as clean. Yeah. Like, you get swarmed by monsters, and you get hit, but you don't. there's no hit stun. It's just like you just get hit, your life, <laughs> your life just goes down. Your life just goes down real quick. It's like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. Heal me, heal me. It's kind of like gives me that vibes, where it's just going to be very chaotic, and the frames are going to drop to, like yeah. he said, 12 frames per second, which is awful. That was, um, I couldn't believe they showed that. I was like, I guess they were honest. <laughs> Yeah, they blatantly show the frame drops and it does not look very good. But I'm sure there's someone out there who's been waiting for Exo Primal their whole life. And shout I, out to you, I, whoever you are. Yeah, I guess uh, so. Um, it's just not for me. Anyway, Dragon's Dogma's 10th anniversary is coming up. This yeah. game. Oh, that I also got that in the cap in my $20 Capcom Jesus. bundle. They had I got Dragon's Dogma. Now, I've never played that, but I've heard a lot of good things about that game. And so, like, I have dragons. So have much dragons. value. My, my, uh, one of my very, very, very close friends, I consider him to be one of my best friends because I grew up with him. Uh, he goes up for Dragon's Dogma. It's one of his favorite games. He's all into, like, the Oblivion kind of games. Uh, Dragon's Dogma. There's another one like that. But I guess Elder Ring falls under that umbrella of those kind of game. Yeah. Uh, well, that Oblivion, kind of game. unless I'm being really dumb. When, when people say Oblivion, they're usually, they're still talking about Elden Ring. Cause they're, oh. They're talking, because it's how there's, not Elden Ring. I'm sorry. Not Elden Ring. What was? What am I thinking of? Elder Scrolls. Elder you know, Scrolls. Yes. There's yes, Elder yes. Scrolls Skyrim and then Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Yes. So it's under that. It's Dragon's Dogma. From what I, from what I understand, I've never really gotten into it like that. But I, I believe it's kind of under that type yeah. of game. Like it's that kind of game. Uh, so that's 10th anniversary is coming out. They announced that there's going to be a, a YouTube video or something where they show how it was made. That's cool. Which for people for people who love that type of thing, you know, that's going to be really cool to see. And uh, yeah. And then last but not least, they end the showcase off with Resident Evil. Yeah. So they showed Resident Evil Village and Gold also, Edition. Yeah, I think, I think they showed. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I believe Village has like this multiplayer mode. And I guess that's what they were showing. They were showing that like all these Resident Evil villains from various games are in the multiplayer mode of Village, I think. Which yeah, is what they were showing. Yep, I don't know much about Resident Evil, but I guess Village is the newest one. It w- it was the newest one or something. It, I, I think so. That sound right? Yeah, I they said something about Resident Evil Seven. I had said no Resident interest. Evil Seven returned to its roots. I've had no interest in. I think Seven is the one where they said it's returned, and I think maybe Eight is Village, and that's okay. the one with the with the big vampire mommy. I have no interest in that game. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like. I don't, I don't know, know. She's been memed to death. That's about it's, it. Yeah. The fact that like everybody was like talking about how, first of all, I don't really under, I don't think she's attractive, but whatever. But I don't know. I just have no interest. Like I've seen gameplay of it and I was like, I, I don't know. Like everybody seems to like this game because they think the, the, the villains are hot and like that doesn't really do it for me. God. Yeah. That's just not a thing for me. I'm yeah. I'm not into uh video game characters in that kind of way. Like sure. A video game character can look, you know, decent or whatever, but that's never going to be the reason why I buy or play a game. Yeah, yeah. That's same. just that will never be the reason why I buy a game. Same. I'll tell you that it's right now. It's just like I have no interest. You but. could not sexualize a video game character enough to make me buy it. It just will not happen unless yeah. they're fucking raw on street. Like at that point, I'm buying porn though. Yeah, they sell porn games. But uh, yeah, so I wish you know in Japan, I'm sure that there's literally, literally a section of games or something that oh, are yeah. just porn yeah, games. Yeah, hundred like, percent. But so anyway, yeah, those that part, but the Resident Evil Four, which we already talked about, I thought that was really yeah. interesting, and I'll, I'll most likely buy that. Um, it's on PS Five, Xbox Series X, and Steam. So this shit, it, it did look insane when they were showing it, but I kept thinking to myself, like, God damn, this is really going to be on a next gen console, yeah, and it's from the GameCube, but they're going that hard. I guess they said it's using the re engine, whatever that means. Uh, um. They made a new re stands for Resident Evil. Um, yeah, of course. And they made a new Resident Evil engine when they made uh, Resident Evil Two remake and Resident Evil Three remake. Okay, that's um, what that's what they mean. Because like they remade those games, but they tried to keep them as honest to their originals as possible while also yes. like vamping them up. 
Um, and they did pretty good jobs. Like I think Resident Evil 2 Remake is really, really, really good. I think when they Remake showed is... some of the gameplay from those, I was impressed. I yeah. will say because I remember what Nemesis looked like in Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. Yeah. I remember what he looked like and how you know bad he looked. Really, if we look at it now, <laughs> and I saw what he looked like when they were showcasing. I was like, damn, this has come a long it way. It has. It has come a long way. So the Resident Evil 4 Remake is, you know. Yeah, it's going to look really good. I'm pretty excited for it. So I never yeah. beat it. So just for example, there was a part where they were showing. I just want to reiterate how nice they looked. There's a part where Nemesis was holding a flamethrower of some sort, and as he was shooting the flamethrower, you could see that the heat from the flamethrower was causing the background to be wavy. Yeah, uh, when something is extremely hot. It has that effect on you know your vision. You could literally see that as he was firing, and I was like, "God damn, they went really hard." So not for nothing, but it will be on the PS5 and the Xbox Series X and Steam for people who love Resident Evil. And there is a there are a lot of you. Uh, I'm sure that this is some great news, which is why they held it for yeah, the end. It's one of Capcom's top like Capcom's top games are Street Fighter, Resident Evil, uh, Monster Hunter, and like Devil May Cry. Like at yep. least right those, now, like those are those, the top. Yeah, those are their flagships. They're also known for other things, but those are. Those are the flagships. I would really say the first three Kenny names are really the the one Street Fighter, Monster Hunter, Resident Evil. Those are the big. Yeah, if we had to say like three. a big three, those are the big three. And then they got like Mega Man, which they've kind of lost touch with and stuff like that. They have other ones, Darkstalker stuff like that. But for the most part, it's those are the big three, and that's why they started one, started off with one of the big three, and they ended with one of the big three, yep. and, and they, they put the other one in the middle. middle. Street Fighter in the middle, Resident Evil at the end, Monster Hunter at the start. Like they knew what they were doing. So they know exactly what they're doing. Uh, They know what their biggest audience is. So Um, Uh, over the weekend, oh, go ahead. What were you going to say? Over the weekend, oh, go. (laughs) (laughs) I was just going to say. It sounds like you're about to say something else, but I was going to say if you want to do do the listener letter. But we we would you say what you want to say about the weekend first? Before we, okay, you know what? I'm glad you reminded me. We will do the listener letters in a in a second. There is only one we have, but. Uh, over the weekend for Smash Ultimate, because you know, you guys know I'm a huge Smash Ultimate fan. I watch like all the tournaments, and yeah, it's just really a fun thing for me. And I sometimes play, although not very often, but I sometimes play it. Anyway, Sephiroth won a Super Major over the yeah, weekend. That's fucking uh, crazy. A straight up Super Major. A Super Major means that players from all over the world are were there in attendance. Like several players, not just like one guy from Japan came or one guy from France came. Uh, a lot of people from all over the world came. So you had Mexico in attendance. You had the U.S. in attendance. It was based in Canada. I think the tournament took place in Canada. You had a lot of Canadians there. And then you had a lot of Japan there. And Japan, so people say Mexico is the best region because it has the two best players, MK Leo and Sparko. However, Japan also has some of the best players in the world. We don't get to see them as much, but every time they do show up, they always end up ruining what people thought the end result of the bracket would be. Yeah. Uh, Japan always ends up like shaking shit up. And I'm not just saying like, oh, a Japanese person got third or something like, no, they tend to win or get second over people like MK Leo and Spargo. For example, at Summit, I think the last Ultimate Summit, MK Leo got eliminated at like fourth place or fifth place or something like that. Like, he did not win or get second like he normally does every time when there's pretty much no Japanese players in contention. They, they brought, I think, like two or three Japanese players for the last Summit. and. One of them just straight up eliminated MKLeo by doing some crazy strategy where he would go Min Min, then Lucina, then Min Min, then Lucina, then Min Min. And that switching, he would switch even when he won. And his translator had to explain to the commentators that that was a strategy that they do with Japan, stuff like that, that they don't do that at all here. That's just not something you see in the regular major tournaments in our region. Uh, if, a, if you went with a character, you just stay that character. That's just kind of what people do. But the Japanese have a very different mindset that if I went with the character, I don't want you to get used to the character and yeah. I'll switch to somebody else. And, and so it worked. It worked on the best player in the world. Because MK Leo, even with all the Japanese people in contention, he's still the best player in the world. And like, it worked on him, which is really cool. But yeah, over this past weekend, Sephiroth, who's a character that recently, uh, like a month or two ago, this narrative started that Sephiroth is actually bad. And all the tailors that have been coming out in the last two months have been putting Sephiroth pretty low, saying he has all these problems, mainly that he's too hard, he's too difficult to be precise because you have to be precise with him. He's not a real sortie. They all of this stuff, his frame data, and all, like they were just they were bashing him. 
And I remember the tune was very different when he first came out, which is typical. When the character first comes out, everyone overhypes the character and they think that the character is like ridiculous. And then the hype dies down. They don't perform well in the tournament. And people start to just bash the character. A Japanese player named Ken, one of the best players in Japan, literally top three. Uh, he took him, to, he so, basically solo played. He plays Sonic as well. But for all of top eight, and apparently before top eight too, he just played Sephiroth. And he played Sephiroth against some matchups where people just thought, like, there's no way. <laughs> like, you don't play Sephiroth against Pyramithra. You don't play Sephiroth against Pac-Man. Like, all of these matches that people thought were just impossible. Uh, he actually just dominated. And he won the tournament grand finals on winner's side. Did not have a bracket reset. So he did not lose with Sephiroth. Like, he, will, he dropped some games, of course. But he did not lose at all he didn't lose with Sephiroth. Set. Wait, and what a now, fucking hardened G. Now people are talking about Sephiroth. And wait, wasn't again. Grand Finals though Sephiroth versus Kazuya? So Grand Finals was Sephiroth, oh. Ka- Sephiroth Kazuya. So I, didn't, I I'm going to watch that. I didn't get to watch that yet. But around when Kazuya came out, I remember me and Fraser were at Medina's house and we were playing. <laughs> and I was using Kazuya and Fraser was using Sephiroth. Yeah. First of all, how cool is that? Both yes. badass characters. And I remember saying to Fraser, how fucking I was like, you know, I want to see like what I want to see in grand finals is Sephiroth Kazuya. Like, that's what I, yes. I want to see shit like that. Well, the fact that happened. that happened is so sick. Yeah, it's actually wild. So winner's finals was Sephiroth Kazuya and then grand finals was Sephiroth Kazuya. So the guy who so lost dope. came back. So it was T. T plays Pac-Man and he plays Kazuya. Uh, first of all, let me just say this. Riddles is considered the best Kazuya in the world. Riddles is considered the best fighting game player in Smash, like, so the fighting game characters, Ryu, Ken, Terry, Kazuya, those are considered fighting game characters. It's weird to say that in a fighting game, but they're considered the fighting game yeah, characters. They're like traditional because because they have the yes. turnaround. They have the turnaround. Yes, like, Sep- yes, Sephiroth is not considered a fighting game character. Sephiroth has never been in a fighting game that's actually licensed. <laughs> uh, but, or, you know, actually Dissidia, but not, okay. The point is, Sephiroth is not conventional how Kazuya is. Yeah, yeah. And, People say Riddles is the best at playing those characters, but I'm gonna be honest with you. Riddles did get top four. He does. He solo mains the fighting game characters, whereas T is known to main Pac-Man and randomly picked up Kazuya like kind of recently. His Kazuya is way more vicious. <laughs> I need this. You, this is so I was bad. messaging Kenny as I was watching. I can't the wait tournament. to watch it. Please watch. Uh, T Kazuya versus Ouch Wolf. The guy's name is Ouch. He's from Canada. Ouch dominated. He pretty much dominated Riddles. Riddles was playing. Riddles was playing the fighting game characters. And this this kid who no one really knows about, he's really young. And he's from Canada, but he doesn't travel really. So you never get to see him. But this event was held in Canada, so he was there. And he dominated Riddles for top four. Like he destroyed him in top four uh, with Wolf. And, you know, Riddles tried to use Kazi, he tried to use Terry, but he ended up losing. I think it did go to game five, but. I think in game five, it was not even close. I think he almost three. He, I think he either did three stock or almost three stock. Anyway, okay. when T got to him, T got to the same guy using T was, uh, T was using Kazuya and the kid was using Wolf. He three owed him. One of the games was a three stock. <laughs> None of the games were close. That is so dope. None of the games were close. And when I told you, I was messaging Kenny because I was so hyped. When I tell you that I've never seen Kazuya be as dominant as he was in these matches, bro, it looked like he was beating up on his little brother whose controller was unplugged. I can't he, wait to watch it, dude. There was a moment where he did five consecutive electric wing office in a row. He just, they came out so fast, too. He was just doing them. And I said, oh, T is the real deal. Dude, that's he the thing. The like, real that deal. move, that move alone is, like, why Kazuya is a problem. And I think, I truly think Kazuya is, like, Really, really good. Like in high tier or top tier. Akazia is top tier, and I think the people need to give him his flowers because he's touch of death. He has he just only is one hard to use. Like that's the he's thing. hard. To, he's hard to use because execution is is not easy for, with, with him. The other thing is that uh, getting in right, getting the hit can yeah. be hard. And if your opponent knows how to play really, really well with their spacing, and this is what this is what the guy who won Ken, the guy who won his name is Ken. He plays Sephiroth. I have to say that because Ken is in the game as well. But uh, the guy who won knew how to space perfectly, so he didn't really lose. I don't think he lost a game, honestly. I forget yeah, if he yeah. lost a game. I don't think he played so perfectly. Just now, in winners, finals, in winners' finals, it winners' finals went to game five, though. 
Yeah. In winners finals, he won a game with Kazuya. He he dominated Sephiroth. He but then I think Ken realized, okay, I can't be honest against this character. Yeah, you gotta keep I, him I, the fuck out. He and he blatantly the next couple games, I'm gonna just call it what it is. He camped him. I think that's what they call like he was just camping him, and there was really nothing Kazuya could do with the the range of the Sef, uh, the range of Sephiroth sword. Obviously, will keep you out, and so T just could not do anything. Yeah, and. That was like, I'm going to expose the weakness of the character. However, when T would get to him, because every once in a while, he would touch him. Touch of death. Yep. Touch of death. For people who don't know what that means, that means I literally hit you once and I combo you so bad that you lose your entire stock. So. EOD, baby. Yeah, yeah he's, he's sick. And like the frame data on the electric is outrageous. It's like Tekken. It's unpunishable. You can't do anything. If you block it, uh, you don't have enough. There's not enough time. If you, if you shield it, there's not enough time for you to react to do anything to punish it. And if you get hit by it, obviously you're just in hit stun for so long he could do any follow up he wants. Uh, he can do another electric. He can do another electric. The move comes into itself. It does a lot of damage. It's very fast. It can be. It's actually jarring how fast it is. And he has invincibility frames on startup. Yep, it's so sick. So I'm but definitely yes. gonna watch. Uh, I'm definitely gonna watch that when I get. A watch, yeah, watch the top four. I think you'll be impressed by the entire top four. It's actually really nice to watch. And the Kazuya gameplay was stellar. The Sephiroth gameplay was stellar. And now people like T uh, tweet. Tweak, I think his name is yeah, Tweak. He's the he was the second best player in the world. I would say that now he's probably just top five somewhere around there. Because Spargo's definitely number two. But Tweak, who also plays Sephiroth, he plays Sephiroth and Diddy. He now is reevaluating his podcast came out today. It's called Tweak Talks. Uh his podcast came out today and he was talking about how he needs to improve. Like, you know, he thought that Sephiroth just wasn't good enough. And this weekend showed him that it's you know, it's him. It's not Sephiroth, it's him. And he was saying it in an optimistic way. He wasn't really down on himself. He was saying that this just showed me that I need to, I need to improve. Like there are people out there who make it work. He yep. made it work at a fucking super major. Like yep. that, that's something so. that's really cool about uh, the game is just that there are a lot of characters and this is something Japan, at least especially in like smash four and even in brawl, Japan was always a lot more experimental and when they really like the character, is. they use them more. Like in Smash Four, everybody said Pac Man was unplayable, but there was I think it was Abadongo, right, who was just absurd with Pac Man. And like when he entered the tournament, he would get like top eight or whatever, and he would get it with Pac Man. Um, everybody else was like Pac Man's unplayable, but this guy would get like top eight with him. And then I think when Mewtwo came out, he was like one of the only Mewtwo players. I want to say it was Abadongo. It might have been somebody. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. I, I love that Japan is very experimental because a lot of the meta comes out of them. Like Steve becoming a problem. Like Steve is considered a problem now. People are starting to say that at peak, Steve is probably the best player in all of Ultimate. Like if if you could say two robots played and they played perfectly, uh, Steve has the highest potential in the entire game. Now, Steve has been doing very well. Will we ever see a Steve be the actual best in the game? That that you know it. It might not happen because of the execution is really difficult, but at perfect play, it's it's theorized by a lot of the players now that Steve is actually the best player in Ultimate, Great. like the best character, uh, just because of the things that he can do. And it's because Japan keeps on releasing these clips where they show these setups that are 100 percent guaranteed that like he has this thing where he could footstool you and then out of footstool, he could do all these crazy uh, ladder combos that there's nothing any, like there's nothing you could do. You get footstool by Steve, and if they execute it perfectly, they can literally send you all the way to the top of the stage and kill you. So, uh, so there's a lot of stuff like that, but I, I really love that the game keeps evolving, and that's one of the things about Smash games, and I, this, this happens with every fighting game, I'm sure, but I only follow Smash. I don't follow Street Fighter, I don't follow Marvel vs. Capcom like that. I follow Smash, and seeing how Smash evolves over time with every single game is so cool to me because people are like, oh, they're done patching it. Now the game's done. Now the game's solved or whatever. Joker's the best character. But like over time, first of all, no one's using Joker anymore at all. Like literally at all. And the characters who are being used like Sephiroth and Kazuya and Steve, granted, these are all DLC I'm naming, but even Fox's gameplay, Fox got some shit recently where now like Light won a major before this super major that just happened. Light won a major. He won the last major. And Fox has been doing really well. Fox won two majors actually in the last year. Uh, by light so fox has gotten some new stuff that has been discovered and characters just keep getting better over time they just keep yep. getting better it's it's something that i like of uh one or two years ago i remember talking about smash on my stream and somebody me talking about melee and somebody saying like oh like 
Melee's like done, like Melee's a solved game, and he was just like really downing Melee. And I was explaining to him all the ways that he was just kind of wrong, and I was like, Melee, like a lot of the equations have been done. However, to say it's solved just isn't true because it there's still new shit that ends up happening. People still find new discoveries and matchups. Like, yeah, I said to uh, your cousin Stango, right? He's a big Melee player and PM player. I uh, I asked him. I said, so Zane has done something with Marv to make the Jigglypuff matchup more in Marv's favor now. And he said, yes. Before Zane, Marv and Jigglypuff, you know, people had their opinions on the matchup, but no one thought that it was as bad as it is now, where Zane just dominates Hungrybox every time. Like that, ma- that matchup has gotten to the point where when they play, it is just expected that Zane is going to completely dominate Hungrybox, no question, and he has been. I'm so happy Zane exists. Because I've been saying for so long, these Marth players need to step up. I'm like, you guys are just too busy bitching about whatever his flaws are, and you're yeah. not looking at how absurd Marth is. Because yeah. he is ridiculous, and y'all are crazy. Like, I remember arguing with somebody at a local, this is years ago when I still went to Melee local. But this yeah. one guy, he was a Marth player, and he was complaining about Jigglypuff. And I was like, Marth wins that matchup. And he was like, you're an idiot. There's no way. I was like... Marth wins that. I was like, I don't play Marth. You are correct. I was like, Marth wins that matchup. I, you're just wrong if you don't think Marth wins the. And I'm explaining to him all the reasons why. Mar- without, I don't play Marth or Puff, but from watching and playing against the two characters, I'm explaining to this Marth player why Marth wins the matchup, and he's just calling yeah. me an idiot. And I'm just happy Zane exists. So that ten years later, even though I don't know where this guy is, somewhere he knows I'm right. That's you know what I mean. Yeah, because it was a period where uh, there was a period where. Hungry Box was dominating the world. Like he was the best player in the world, I think, for like three years. Yep. And you know, there were Marfs around. There were good Marfs around too. Yep. And they just could they apparently they just could not deal. And now you have a Marf that Hungry Box literally cannot deal with. Yep. Like he he just I mean, and in no disrespect to Hungry Box, he's still one of the absolute best players in the world. Uh every time there is an event, he's still in the top, whatever. But Zane just pushed a meta so far, and that's just really cool to see. I like that in everything. I think that as a competitive, as a competitor and a competitive person, I just like seeing metas be pushed further. Like right yeah. now, in Yu-Gi-Oh, everyone is complaining because the last YCS, YCS Hartford, was won by a Mystic Mind Sky Striker deck. It was really a Mystic Mind deck featuring some Sky Striker cards. And Nationals is next month, and there's no events in between now and Nationals. So the last YCS, the thing that people are looking at to go into the next event, which is Nationals, is a Mystic Mind deck winning. And the Yu Gi Oh community hates decks like that always. They hate any kind of stun or any kind of anti meta type of thing winning. Can't stand it. All the elitists come out of hiding and they just spew their like really toxic gatekeepy rhetoric about how oh, this is so awful, blah, blah, blah. And uh, while I don't think that Mystic Mind is good for the game, I just think it's funny that the same people who go to a tournament and will sit in front of you for 10 minutes and combo wall turn one and not let you play the game at all have the nerve and the audacity to complain <laughs> about Mystic Mind, which doesn't let you play the game at all. And it's like, okay, well, you're not letting them play either. You, you're just doing it in a more roundabout way. They play one card, you play 20. Yeah. It's the same end result. Diva one, like you setting up four negates and giving me exactly one turn to, to deal with it is really not any different from you going, activate Mystic Mind, deck you out, because you don't play any outs. And the other thing that I think is funny is that no one plays any outs to Mystic Mind because apparently playing at least one out is so bad, and it will make you lose games because you play that one out to it, which, you know, I, I understand. This is not lost on me, the logic behind it. Like, oh, you don't want to play some Cosmic Cyclone in the main deck or Harvest of Duster, which is legal. You don't play any of those cards because when you're going first and you're comboing off, those cards make you brick more and stuff like that. But it's just funny to me that options exist to counter these decks that are known about the Mystic Mind decks and the back row heavy decks like Eld- Eldritch and stuff, but no one's willing to do anything about it. So they just go on the internet and complain about it. And I think that that is not the correct thing to do. I think the correct thing to do is to always push the meta and figure out ways where your engine can deal with something like Mystic Mind or figure out plays where you can play around it. And if you can't, and if you actually just can't, then shut the fuck up because you're also not letting anybody else play either. Like yeah, your I mean, goal when you go to a tournament. These people aren't letting, they're scythe locking each other. That's not letting it, you're not letting me play either. When you tell me I can't use my action deck for the whole turn, you're not letting me play either. It's, that's just the way Yu Gi Oh is now. It is. 
So I think it's funny that like the meta, it sounds right now like the meta isn't being pushed instead it's being complained about, which is what we were talking about with the melee thing. The guy was complaining about the Puff matchup playing Marv and you were yeah. like, you're being ridiculous. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of how I'm looking at the current, like the modern Yu-Gi-Oh players. It's like, just figure it out. Every format has been figured out in some way. And if it can't be figured out, then you try your, you try your fucking hardest. Okay. But at the end of the day... I'll like, give the Yu-Gi-Oh players the credit of, you know, it's probably not as obvious. But to me... Oh, it's definitely not as I obvious. remember I was like, he has a sword. Like, I, was, yeah. I was like, how does she... I was like, realistically, how does Puff ever get in on you? Like, no, you don't get it. I was like, no, I do. Like, you have a sword. A long... Like, it's... it's uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Um... Not intangible. Disjointed. I was like, you have a yeah, big disjointed hitbox. How does Puff ever get in? Yes. And, and there was people other who don't know, too, but for people who don't know, disjointed means that literally I can put out this hitbox, right? So this thing that can hit you and deal damage to you. And if you do anything to that, as in collide your hitbox with it, nothing happens to me. Yeah, because my hurt box isn't on because like typically yes. with a punch. Your hurt box is in your hit box because yes. if Fox a does punch. a move, all of Fox's moves are his actual body being thrown at the opponent. So if Fox does a sex kick, right, like his neutral air, if Fox does a nair, and you hit me also, you throw out a hit box and we collide, I'm going to get hit. You're going to get hit. Usually, yep. that's usually to simplify. That's usually how it goes, because Fox is hitting you with his actual body, which happens to be his also also his hurt box. Marth using a sword. If I swing it at you and I space it correctly. If you hit the sword, well, you just get hit yeah, or you, you collide with it or you collide with the sword and we just cancel each other out. But I will never in that, in that situation, <laughs> I will never take damage. Yeah, yeah. That's what so, the disjoint is. But anyway, uh, we're pretty close. Do you want to do the listener letter? Yeah, let's do the listener letter. So we have a mailbox uh, where we take in submissions. I'm their podcast at gmail.com where you can send a listener letter to us and we'll read it out on the show. Uh, so if that's something that interests you, let us know and just write in anything you want about any of our episodes or any topic whatsoever, any anime, video games, really anything. We we, we really don't reject anything. It would have to be something wild. But yeah, we do listen to letters on the show. So this one is about our Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness episode. Uh, it's from Austin Cruz, who's been a long time uh, subscriber to our Patreon. So he says, first of all, I'd like to say how great the Bruce Campbell cameo was in this movie. Also, I'd like to say that the movie is better than given credit for, I'll admit, it definitely could have done better in terms of plot. However, Doctor Strange had more character development than you think, it was just very subtle. From a psychological, spiritual standpoint, it's pretty well done in that aspect. One of the biggest points in the movie expands on is the Ancient One made in the first movie and the worry that Strange would turn out like uh, Caselius? I'm not sure. I'm not really f- familiar with the names, to be honest, but Caselius, it looks like it says. His arrogance in this movie is a hint of that. This movie does tackle the less exciting side of psychology slash spirituality, which is the shadow side. The character development was more showing a mirror to himself. It touched on it in the first one with an insignificant spec comment, but delved much deeper into this one. It's why she asked him if he's happy. Because he hasn't dealt with the loss of Christine, his confidence turns into arrogance. There's a fine line between confidence and arrogance and being able to let go of the things you're not able to control slash shouldn't try to control uh he witnesses firsthand with scarlet witch and how she acted about her kids it wasn't until he met himself that caused the incursion that he truly realized what he was capable of and that he wasn't much different from wanda the reason he was able to use the dark hold wasn't hypocritical and it was similar reasoning to the ancient one using the power of their mamu duality seems hypocritical which is why caselius and mordo went to the extremes because they didn't understand duality so I will say this, the character development to me wasn't really there because Strange was just Strange the entire movie. He didn't really develop when you think about it. Like They specifically told us in the movie, you are dangerous, you are arrogant, and he was that the entire movie. There was a part where, the part where he actually started using the Darkhold, I was like, what the fuck? I thought we just talked about this. When he <laughs> demanded to use the dark hole, I was blown away. He was like, give it to me. And he fought the guy. He fought the incursion strange <laughs> over the book that caused all of this nonsense to begin. Like the movie, the whole reason why Wanda's tripping is because of the dark hole for the most part. So like I was genuinely a little shocked, but that's also how consistent he is. So as far as character development, I don't think Strange got that much character development. Like, yeah, sure. When she said, Are you happy? We all knew he's not actually happy, 
But yeah, he lost his girlfriend. She's getting married to somebody else. No one's fucking happy in that situation. And honestly, if I'm being honest, I think it's fucking toxic as hell to ask your ex at your wedding if they're happy. Bitch, <laughs> I'll knock all this shit over. I'll make your man impudent. I'll, I'll give him a small dick. Don't ever ask me if I'm happy and you're my fucking ex and it's your wedding. You get married to a new nigga. How dare you? How dare you? So as far as, far as character development, Luckily, Strange ain't me, because my character, I would have become a villain right there when she asked me that question. Right, she's like, I would have developed. I would have yeah. developed right there. Y'all just saw me develop into a villain right the fuck there. Don't ask me if I'm happy. I don't even know why I would be at my ex's wedding, because that, to me, that's just a level of maturity that I am never, ever going to be ready for. That, that's just, that does not speak to me. Uh, yeah, I'm you would have to be, you would have to be my ex from 10 years ago. Like, it would have to be, I could see myself, like, there's some exes that I have where it's like, it's been so long where yeah. they're just people. And like, like, yeah, yeah, you and you were probably like very young at the time and stuff yeah. like that. And like, I could go to their wedding, whatever. It wouldn't but matter. like, Strange proposed to this woman like and a year ago. Yeah, I, I'm just, there's no world where I'm mature enough to allow myself to be at someone's wedding that I used to be in love with, like genuinely yeah, in love yeah, with. Yeah, and yeah. I was going to marry this person I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with. And on top of all this, I still want that person. Yeah, 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 yeah. In that situation, I'm with you. I ain't going to yeah. wedding. Yeah, so I just feel like Strange was consistent in who he's always been, which is arrogant, right? Like, the movie, the very first Doctor Strange started off with him. His, he's very arrogant. He knows he's the shit. He knows he's, like, the best surgeon in the world. And he's very. he was very rich and just very sure of himself. And he carried himself with that level of arrogance. As a sorcerer, he's the exact same way. And throughout the entire movie... He pretty much remained the exact same way. The only inkling I could feel like where he might have been a little bit different is when he trusted in uh, America Chavez, you know, like use your power. It's the only way or whatever. And he showed and she used her power to show Wanda how much of a monster she truly was. She kept saying she wasn't a monster in the whole movie. In reality, she was the monster. So yeah. when he trusted in her instead of doing what the other strange did, the other strange took her powers. But that's also hindsight. To me, it's it's easy to do that when you know how that turns out. The other strange tried to do it all himself and take the powers of America Chavez and died for it. Strange was like, well, fuck that. That didn't work. It's like, if you got to see what another version of you did that did not work, like, would you make the same exact decision? Like, probably not, right? Like, if I saw, like, oh, if I play this deck, I won't top this event. I won't win this event. Like, I probably will not play that deck again. Like, I, pro I won't be stubborn and say, I'm just going to do the exact same thing that the other one did. Now, yeah. in some cases, though, he does do the same thing. Like he still used the dark hole, even that after the incursion thing and all that. So, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I think you know some. I, as I said in that podcast, I, I did enjoy the movie. I've only seen it once, though. I do think if I watched it again, I might be able to see more things. But I enjoyed the movie. But I don't like. Yeah, like I enjoyed. I don't the love movie. It. Like, it's like like I said, I'm I not five out of yeah. ten. It's yeah, like, it's not a movie that I will want to watch again, especially not often. Like, yeah, yeah. I just don't see myself... It would have to be one of those things... So the thing about Marvel that they have on all of us is if you ever want to show someone who hasn't seen the Marvel movies, you have to kind of show them all the movies in order and all that stuff. And so at some point in my life, I imagine that there may come a time where I will have to show someone Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness again, and I'll watch it. And I won't be mad that I have to watch it. There are certain yeah, movies yeah, that yeah. I genuinely will be mad Same. that I have to watch again, right? Like, there will just be movies that are so bad, like Thor 2 and stuff like that. Thor uh, 1, I, Thor 2, and Ant-Man. Thor 1, Thor 2. <laughs> all the Ant-Mans. Uh, there are movies that I genuinely never want to see again. And this movie is not in the category of, like, astronomically bad. I just think the plot pretty much sucks. But I do like a lot of the visuals I loved. I love when Wanda was spazzing out. I, I even said the part where she whispered in the guy's ear. <sighs> like, I thought that was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That part was amazing to me. Uh, there's a lot of cool scenes, but there's a lot of stuff that we talked about. And you can listen to our, if, if you're, whoever's listening to this podcast, if you, if you don't know exactly what we said about the movie, we do have an episode on Dr. Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, specifically dedicated to just that movie. So check that out if you haven't already. But yeah, Austin, I appreciate, as always, I appreciate the listener letter. And I do see what you mean about like hypocritical and duality. There is something to be said about someone who acknowledges that using the dark side, right? Like Star Wars I don't think that everyone who uses the dark side necessarily has to be evil per se. Yeah. Right. And, and everyone who uses, you know, the, the regular force is also not hundred percent good. Like people, human beings in general 
have duality. All of us, no one is purely good and purely evil. All of us are, you know, somewhere on a spectrum of all of it, right? So it is cool to know that, like, yes, while Doctor Strange has good intentions, he can still resort to using something like the Dark Hold, which he knows corrupts you. Yep. And uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I agree with I agree that. With that. I think it's uh, it's interesting. I'm interested to see where Marvel goes. Uh, you know, I'll see, I'll see all the movies at some point. So. Yeah, yeah, we're we're just watching them all. I mean, we oh yeah, we can still do Eternals too. We still have to do our yeah our episode Eternals. on Eternals. And I think I think that's the only movie in terms of new movies like since we started doing this podcast, right? The only yeah. movie left we haven't really talked about. I think. Yeah, yeah, and so we yeah we're gonna do Eternals soon. We could actually do that real soon. Because uh, we're we're looking for topics, and you guys can suggest topics to us. I think Kenny and I said we're both going to watch Hawkeye and do an episode on that. Yeah. Uh, we still haven't done a Loki episode. We'll do that one as well. So we I'm going to devote some time Loki to watch. Episode? No, we haven't done an episode dedicated to the show Loki. No. Best Marvel show. It is. It <laughs> actually is the best one. It is actually the best one, and I really think that guy, the actor, I don't know, I forget his name. He's so funny to me, but I think Loki is genuinely the best one. So I mean, if you want. The, the Sunday episode, the episode that we'll be recording Sunday and releasing subsequently Monday, we could do Loki for that, and I'll just watch like a recap video on YouTube, because I haven't seen it in a while. Yeah, um, yeah, same. I'll probably have to recap it as well, but it's definitely the best. Yeah, we can do Loki on Sunday. Yeah, let's do Loki on Sunday, and then we could commit to uh, doing Hawkeye as well. Like, I'll start watching Hawkeye. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just watch a recap for Loki. So Loki will be next, it sounds like, guys. And uh, yeah, we, have a, we, have a, we still have a lot planned. Um, I do want to, at some point, get the Hunter Hunter episode out. Because Hunter Hunter, apparently, and I still don't believe it yet. I'll believe it when I see it. But you guys have gotten extremely hype that Hunter Hunter is supposedly returning. And the guy has made a Twitter account. And he's the most followed mangaka on Twitter. I need them shut. to put out five chapters in a if Five weeks in a row, yep. I see a chapter, then I'll believe it. I won't believe it that it's back until I see five chapters in a row which I don't think is going to happen. Me either. So I agree with Kenny. To me, it's vaporware. It's like Kingdom Hearts 3 before it came out, when it was that 12-year span, and we kept hearing about it coming out every year. I don't believe it until I see it. Uh, so, But I do want to do an episode on Hunter Hunter before any of that shit starts to pop off. So I, I have a lot to do. I don't think I'll ever be able to rewatch Hunter Hunter in totality before doing that podcast episode, just because how frequent these come out. But I will watch. Uh, YouTube is a great resource. I say it all the time. For the purpose of a podcast, YouTube is amazing because there's so many channels that dedicate that are dedicated to just one topic, and yeah. they will literally, in detail, walk me through every arc. And all because I've seen all of it, it'll be like, oh yeah, that did happen. And it'll just kind of refresh my mind, and I'll make notes, and then we'll talk about it and all the great things about it. Because Hunter Hunter is in my top five. So, uh, oh, yeah. Hunter Hunter, my hero, Death Note, Kogias. Plenty of stuff that we still have to cover. Yeah. But just keep rocking with us, guys. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, as I always say, do the things that make you happy. We are getting out of here. Good night. Bowser. <laughs> <laughs>